Olá, bom dia a todas, bom dia a todos. To everyone, for you that's watching us live in this event, we are located at the ESPN campus for the university, and we would like to thank APEX for the participation of everyone involved here today in this third week for international e-commerce for Brazil APEX for the 2022 year. As this is a traditional event for Apex, requesting that Brazilian companies are participating in the international e-commerce currently. We are also foreshadowing trends and to support the internationalization of the companies for the e-commerce. We are going to have four days for lectures from today until Friday. Our schedule, we're going to share success cases. We are going to share more trends and topics that are more relevant to international e-commerce. Today, we are going to start live in SPM located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we are also broadcasting for everyone in the world. From tomorrow, Wednesday, you're going to be able to watch exclusively online, broadcasting directly from the studios from ESPN. So we'd like to first thank you, each and every one of you, for the speak persons, for everyone that's going to participate today and participate also in the roundtables related to the e-commerce, sharing all their knowledge they have today especially on Friday. This year, we have news, actually. We are going to have today, during the afternoon, a very special event. So tomorrow morning, uh, today, in the morning, we are going to, well, please keep your mobiles in the silent mode. And you can also watch us via Zoom for everyone enrolled in this workshop. And after each lecture, all the participants, we are very appreciative of your participation. You can also raise your hand and ask your question. So we can get the microphone to you, and then you can ask your question for everyone. You can also have the option to Q&A option via Zoom and they are going to be answered throughout the event or even um, directly through the chat. By the time we have available for each lecture. For the English lectures, um, please notice that we have an interpretation channel available via Zoom. So if you are here, located live here with us, you can select this option through the link. And if you have any issues, please raise your hand and we're going to direct to our staff. We know that e-commerce has increased throughout the world. And to give more details, well, we are going to share more information throughout the day, giving more information, presenting data, especially for the electronic e-commerce. I would like to invite APEX manager Igor Celestin. Igor is graduated in international relations and he has MBA for Brazilian economy. And now he's here with us to help us with all this information. So please, Igor Celeste. Bom dia a todas e a todos. Primeiramente, eu gostaria Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank the opportunity to thank everyone from the private sector. And I used to say that Apex is for all the companies. So if you are following us online, you are also very appreciative of your participation. It's a huge opportunity to bring information related to numbers 
related to the e-commerce, especially the electronic one. This meeting is quite strategic if you come to think about it, because I think it's important to share some, some numbers here, especially for challenges and also opportunities that we may have open in the upcoming years. And if we come to think about it in terms of economic, the digitalization of this can be a great bridge between Brazilian companies and international commerce. In 2021, Brazil was the 24 biggest exporter in the whole world especially for assets. And we know that in terms of economics and also for attracting investments, Brazil is a leadership for this. And we have a great potential to develop everyone, especially here within our territories, but also to expand beyond borders. So we are already one of the 10 economics in the world. We've been the five, fifth uh, investment destiny, which is losing for a few other countries. So what does it mean in reality? Because we have a reality to have a more relevant role in the whole world. And e-commerce, as it is, can be a great opportunity for this. So we can make a name for our Brazilian companies, especially for the beginners and the startups. One third of the exportations related companies are the startups, but they only represent a very small number from Brazil. So we have space to increase numbers throughout the years. And we believe that e-commerce can be our waiting window for this opportunity. I'm going to share a few numbers here on the screen so you can see visually here. First, I'd like to show what is the full vision of the digital for assets and services. This is a market that in 2021 has achieved more than $8 trillion. So it's a huge one and it's made for several types of markets, but also for digital payments, every kind of purchase being steaming or any other categories. And what it's possible to highlight here in terms of online purchase, a trend is quite highlighted here. It's highlighted in terms of several global players. So China has up around three billions and United States around two. And we can compare with UK, which is in the third position. It's also quite relevant. So there is a difference between all of them, between China, USA and the other countries, because they are in the, in the center of the digital transformation, because they have a high consumption via online platforms, but they also have the platforms. So this is what makes the difference. See, this was the, the first insight I would like to share with you. So if any strategy we can share with the global market, we should have this into consideration, especially those two countries, because they are the ones that are being most relevant overall. When a part is about the dynamic part of it, please notice that we have a trend, a very denunciated trend that has a great numbers here. And we have about the chance to achieve 20 trillion dollars for all the assets in digital point of view. For purchase online, it represents 56% of all the purchases. And during pandemics, it has even increased as pandemics has impacted so much 
for digital purchase, for transportation, for hotels, or the services that is important. The, the assets for the goods has been changed a lot and has increased that if we analyzed the digital point of view, it has decreased a bit. You can notice in this graphic from the right portion of it, it has changed a bit. They, it was about 20% between 2016 and 2019 and has decreased around 10%, which was related to the purchases. When we think about it, my lecture is going to focus this related to products that are exported in terms of competition related as furniture, as fashion, personal hygiene, cosmetics, all these segments, they are related in a general way and it's fitted in the purchase online for all this so we can achieve this number so our analysis based on this round and this is only one third of the online purchase i've been i mentioned previously china here again is a highlight this is more than three trillion dollars just one third of the market only owned by china followed next by us so it's a very dynamic market and after that we have the other economies in the world uk germany korea purchase of good access related to electronics is a huge amount of, of results an hour one here is around 37 billion dollars so our country is one of the most increased during 2020 and 2021 between 2019 and 21 has doubled and this is quite interesting because the companies that are being part of the brazilian market they are being waking and making more effects directed to the market with the increase of this it's quite positive from our side because it gives enough space so they can go for other markets here we can notice that other countries are also having a high a high opportunity for increase so Latin countries they are very strategic in this point of view for e-commerce for instance Argentina had uh, an average increase and should be 41 percent between last year and the current year it's a uh, in Brazil disputes with China to be the largest goods provided to Argentina in the past years. And we also have seen the growth in Argentina for e-commerce transactions. And that creates opportunity for the Brazilian companies because that market is good not only for the larger Brazilian companies, but also for the middle and the small size companies because of the large competitiveness here. And here we show how the e-commerce the world has grown recently. And notice here, that during the pandemic in 2020 and 2021, the growth of this sector reached almost 30% in 2020, and then it got to 20% annual, uh, annually, and that's a very significant growth. And just an example, the sales through uh, brick stores between 2016 and 2021 just grew 2% per year and that is the growth that it experienced back then and a part of the brick stores the sales in e-commerce we have a, a margin of 22 percent that means that this is a movement that there's no comeback the pandemic has expedited it and the companies will need to know how to fit into this logistics standard or the new behavior standard of the consumers that uh, works digitally but not only uh, in the country but also in the global market and these figures show that 
And so much so that in 2016, the e-commerce of our goods just represented 8% of the retail transactions worldwide, but now it represents in 2021, uh, it represents 18%. But the trend is that in the next 10 years, it will get about one fourth of all the global retail transactions. The companies that are here know what that means because it's a new structure. It's a new business model that is merging and which needs adaptation uh, requirements to be met and also um, qualifications so that the sales can be made worldwide. How do these sales distribute in terms of goods worldwide? So in 2021, according to ERA monitor data, we have 14.3% uh, of the entire sales are concentrated in clothing and shoes and also food and drinks have a great um, representation here. And then we have other sectors where Brazil is worldwide competitive like in furniture and personal care and beauty products we have 2.7 percent in health products that is 1.3 percent and what that means is that first of all the e-commerce market is very pulverized so you do not have a large concentration in a few segments we have many segments that are already transaction digitally and we also have a very high relevance of these sectors which now for instance in brazil we have some of those sectors in our uh, portfolio to commercialize worldwide. We're not talking about fashion, uh, and personal care products, and that's very decisive in the internationalization of that seg of those segments. And who are the players? And this explains the relevance of China and the US in the global market. And this is how we can understand how the sales are distributed in um international players and amazon alibaba and jd represent uh, nearly 43 percent of everything that is commercialized so these are the largest world platforms and where you have the largest uh, amounts sold but there are many many others scared throughout the other countries that lead their national markets and this structure of becoming international is obvious that we should think about them. amazon alibaba as participating in our event this week but nevertheless we also have to think about the characteristics of each country and their local players and how they can be decisive in those markets as well and here are a few are a few of, of the countries selected in latin america and the growth as we have five very strategic countries we have mexico peru argentina brazil and they have a slightly larger domestic market compared with the other countries. And here you can see the share of the total sales for goods e-commerce. And Mexico represents 23%, Argentina 15%, Chile 9%, which is the green bar on the left. So we have a very large representative of those market total sales. And obviously Brazil is the largest one and it represents a loan 41 percent of the entire latin america e-commerce sales and i'd like to attract your attention to this uh, average annual growth which is the yellow bar that will be the trend between 2022 and 2026 just uh, noted sorry 2016 to 2021 so just notice how these markets have grown between those years and that represents over 30%, 35% per year in terms of the digital sales of goods. So it's a very relevant world dynamic that cannot be left unnoticed. Melhor competitividade, até pela questão logística, a questão cultural, a proximidade. In então, export, é uma... and because of our code, because of our logistics, and this, this is a very crucial element. So these, all, uh, all these markets have grown more than 35% in terms of e-commerce sales. And that also generates a need for the Brazilian companies to develop new strategies to get into those markets and improve their e-commerce platforms as something fundamental for them. So when you think about Brazil, we have a 
highlighted anos da pandemia foi growth during the pandemic years which was very expressive, expressive over uh, 50 to 60% it's the world in uh, a few years so it's Ele fundamental to have this growth in e-commerce because it provides our companies to understand the logistics challenges that they will have and how they can prepare for the future challenges for them to get into other countries and in terms of trends just to show you in the beginning of the 1990s we had the very first event of online purchases we have the pizza deliveries and then ebay and amazon created in in the middle of the 1990s and then yahoo paypal google alibaba right in the end of the 1990s and that transforms the market very significantly and google, google buys uh, youtube and then amazon launches their prime services and we have a huge modernization modernization of the electronic commerce and from 2010 we have the smartphone era with new model uh, business models and the social commerce which has become even more relevant as a way of sensibilizing and create awareness in customers and in Brazil and abroad. And we have here the importance of the e-commerce approach based on relationship with people and the use of social media like Facebook, Twitter, TikTok to influence the purchase decisions of customers. And that uh, makes these apps even more relevant and important made them actually during the pandemic and we use the storytelling to involve the public and that's become fundamental for social comments and we've established this deeper connection with the customers involving narratives experiences to attract the potential buyers attention and another piece of information that is important is that we notice here how fundamental is to see what is being done today in terms of big da data and how uh, information is collected regarding behavior of consumers so that we can understand how we can segment the public and improve the company's sales margins just and as an example about these trends i'd like to point out the mobile sales which are crucial and that gets us closer to Asia, for instance. As for food and drinks through cell phones, we have some research that have been done in Asia and in Europe. And based on them, we see, and also in North America, but we see that the trend of Asian consumers is more directed to purchasing food and drinks uh, on their mobile phones compared with Europe and North America, but this is something very strong in Asia and uh, in Latin America as well. And uh, in Brazil, that takes place through the cell phone and the mobile media. And this is something very significant in Latin America and also in Asia, as I said, and that is replicated in Europe and in North America. And to Somehow, I would like to give you an insight when you're talking about the middle to long term challenges for the Brazilian companies to get into uh, overseas markets. We have these classical export model, which requires us to have this huge preparation through markets or fairs. We have to do, um, design very well how uh, design very well how we can access um, the exchange in credit and what's the impact in the Brazilian uh, Brazilian uh, uh, market and it's never been very natural to get to the B2C very few companies are successful in B2C worldwide but the greatest force and our immediate in foreign trade is still concentrated in B2B accessing those national markets through agents with larger scale operations and B2C would just be a, a side B alternative a more costly one compared with other markets and here in the e the cross-border e-commerce model that changes this model changes it goes through a transformation here we have just a few logistic platforms that are very specializes that provide this clearance in terms of logistics for instance export a fossil from uh, the brazilian post office 
company, but we still have a large demand here, but it's not a simple export model. You still have to get prepared and adapt yourself and adapt your, pro your products to the markets and to the standards and rules, labeling, uh, packaging. It's still fundamental. But what are the opportunities here? We have a reinforcement of these B2C operations. So the Brazilian private, we will be able to get into the other markets with your own uh, brands more easily. And this is a more pulverized and uh, lower scale uh, sort of commerce. We don't have to fill an entire container to make business or higher storage areas for that. Uh, and probably you would have a very steep growth of our small to middle-sized companies abroad. And Sebrae is a partner of us, and 70% of the jobs generated in Brazil are generated by small to middle-sized companies. E-commerce is a great opportunity to expand the operations of our middle to small size companies worldwide and that will create even more development in brazil that's decisive and i would like to thank apex for the for the organization of this event and thank you also for the opportunity so as i said in the beginning we have a forum here for your questions is answered and now we would like to invite paula from apex and she can take the microphones to anyone who is willing to ask your questions and who is on uh, with us online can also take part in this by sending you your questions through the q and a which is a portion of zoom for those who have enrolled in these meetings so that you can actually ask your questions paula please would uh, would like to hand the mic over to anyone here in the audience. So please identify yourself and who you are and who you're working for, please. Good morning. My name is Junior Pinet. I work for Adrian. And one of the things that we've noticed in this e-commerce international platform are the barriers that we've faced regarding logistics. We have a very strong competitor from China who offers many free things. And it's been painful to us to place our products at a competitive price compared with that competitor. And logistics, as we know, takes a lot of time in our case. Therefore, my question is, do you have any suggestion to solve that problem? So have you already been working on that? Working on logistics and uh, being successful, expanded the B2C market in Brazil. So thank you very much. So I would like to invite you to the other speeches at this event because some of the partners that we have who are speaking during this event are focused on providing solutions for those logistic challenges. And logistics has become something more difficult from the pandemic, not only for e-commerce sales, but also to traditional uh, brick store sales and it's become very costly but perhaps that's not only the case of your company but also to the companies operating nationwide and also for large bulk containers and uh, but the companies that use those containers and fraction the products the logistics for those companies has become very complicated and we have to rely on operators who provide a more expedite logistics service and i therefore would like to invite you to take place in those meetings so we have another question from our audience just a second please 
Good morning. My name is Rafael. I am the uh, Rafael. My name. Uh, I am the founder of a startup for export logistics. But I have two questions for you. One: Do you have data from the government of how much Brazil exports and imports, and what is the share of Brazil in terms of sales, in terms of uh, our exports, and then? We have a tax-related questions. When we think about costs, what is the advantage of the Brazilian e-commerce compared with overseas e-commerce based on the export tax chain that we have here and overseas? So I would like to hear about that from you. So thank you very much from, uh, for your questions. It's very important to know about the participation of small to middle-sized companies, participation act, participating actually in the e-commerce. So we do not have any concrete data, but something that attracts our attention and something that we are uh, wanting to investigate a little bit is about. That means that the number of engaged e-commerce companies is between six to 10,000 companies. And that is related to all the sales operations through e-commerce because you have an increase of the number of operators that are engaged with lower price sales. Well, I cannot estimate that figure or the percentage of that, but I believe that it should not be that big, but it's still representative in terms of the number of transactions per year. And the other question relates to a basic comparison. So if you see the internal market, we have more taxes when you are uh, importing goods compared with the many taxes that we have when we export goods, and that provides the tax optimization of our companies. And as you said, we have to adapt the companies to the external markets and also in terms of logistics. So generally speaking, we disclose exports because it provides us with tax uh, optimization and it might also uh, stimulate our companies to get more competitive and more innovative. And here we have the last question because, because we have to move on with our schedule. And then we would um, just hear this question that has been made, uh, asked um, online. So my name is Rodrigo from Allegris, and I would like to know ab about your future statistics and to know if you are considering in those statistics the statistics the 5g effect on those well i think that that's not model in those um estimates well i've had this contact with the database that provides us with that information but based on the data modeling structure 5g is not considered but that might generate a scale or a position that we are not uh, aware of for this time because i do not think that that's included in the calculation methodology yet but it's very hard to estimate that because it's very disrupted and is generating scaled opportunities that we cannot even figure out considering the current economic statistics so the opportunity is very very large it can be even larger than what we are thinking about the current sales that we have so, Igor, I'm asking you a last question for this session, and I would like to apologize for the other people who asked the questions. But the last question that is coming from Luis Fernando Lima, who is with us online, he wanted, wants to know how e-commerce could work for the other sort of commerces, for instance, retail so as for the wholesale and retail sales we do have interest in opportunities in, in our analysis we based it on retail as a whole and direct cons um, behavior of the consumers based on those statistics but we do know that there are some platforms that are dedicated to wholesale sales and i think that these opportunities can also be explored in b2b but the effects are also large in b2b and certainly you would have some effects that are scattered throughout the consumers and also uh, through sales and they can benefit from that so thank you very much
So thank you to Igor. So he brought us he brought so, so much many information, information, so many, so many figures. Numbers. And uh, as, as I said I've before, said, that will guide all our conversations, the ones that we we'll have that we've had so far. We've seen we've that we seen have that many, opportunities many opportunities to operate e in the e-commerce world. world. But, but the first but step that we have to take is to transform is the transformation digitally. In the digital world. So we can have more information about this topic, about the transformation in the digital world. We are going to invite the Didatrich founder for in branding she's been in the market for 20 years for the experience for marketing consultant and entrepreneur and she has an enriched experience for retail i also like to thank for the opportunity to be here with us andrea dritich please welcome her Bom dia. Good morning. Well, so let's discuss what is the transformation in the digital world. Well, so just to share my background, I've been working in retail in the Ponjo Soccer Group, in which I aided to make project there for e-commerce, social media, for mobile innovation, and also for pure player to aid in this process of bringing the expressions and the importance of the storytelling just beyond the transaction between product and price in the digital world. And also for the BRF, which is a huge player in the industry for Sagia, Portugal and other markets. And especially in the international level, in which what was the perspective to bring it to more countries and the straightening for the digital part. For a few years, I've been an entrepreneur, so I help other startups and companies and new business in this new kind of economy and also helping with the content for this journey of transformation. I also participate in a podcast for this new path. So if you are beginning your business now, it's a great opportunity to listen to it and get your tips. And beyond the years, I've been straightening with clients as Grupo Somo or Grupo Carrefour for Whole Foods, startups for health, and now I have a vast knowledge for this now for these projects, and to have so many kind of different looks and outcomes. So, if everyone's been for a burnout moment, for anxiety crisis, for mental health in general terms, this is going to increase even more. So Rico's, which is one of the great aspects of this topic, he mentions that in the next 100 years, we are going to live 20,000 years of technological advancement. So if we think about it, if we have a great challenge ahead to deal with technologies coming up and every moment, this is going to be our new kind of life. And as we already mentioned earlier today, how much COVID and the pandemic itself has accelerated this process for our daily lives. And this was a, a breaking point for our lives, that technology would be part of every kind of business. We saw that this actually took place. So here we have some projections that in the next five years, we are going to be similar to the American market in terms of internet and digital one. And B2B, this is no longer different as well. We have a rev uh, research about it that's going to relate the business and the results. And this is also part of the digital world. So 41% of the leaders, they mentioned that the electronic commerce is the most effective way to making their own sales, even in the real life purchases. 
So if we compare all these, we can see that the digital one has been straightening very much. Well, I have so much baggage that allies technology with branding, with the, the brand itself, because we can no longer separate those two paths because technology is a way for the process in which you have to think about what is the kind of experience I would like to leave for my customers, for my clients. And brands, the biggest companies, they are also from technology. Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Samsung, and the couple, last couple of years, those are the biggest players and the most valuable companies because, well, they understand the human needs. They understand the pain that they remove the, the painful part of the connection and they actually deliver what they promise. And this is one of the biggest attributes. And I also like to to make this this ranking because it breakthroughs the brands in which the brands are no longer changing the, the segments. They are from startups and micro enterprise that are just appearing. And in these terms, the market for digital world is no longer the about the the competition that were in our place for our own branding. Our competition is at several different companies, no longer just one. So they can have part of our share and still we are not being able to see it. But soon enough, we are going to see this separation between several companies. We are not going to uh, let the just say for the product, but we're going to integrate several solutions for this. So we are going to discuss this a bit further on. But what about the companies that are breaking through their own segments? Well, the explanation is would be attending the human needs in a very specific way. That something that's connect to the person. So they also understand what the person needs and what the person would like to consume. For startups from micro enterprises, well, I've seen this an opportunity in the segment, in the sector. But then, what would be the impact caused in this? What would be impact for the person's life for this? What is the opportunity? And after that, what can we think about it for the journey, for the consumption? What is going to be the difference in this person's lives? So they see and they locate precisely the gaps to be better. And they provide experiences that are unique, that are different from anything else than they experience. And what would be this experience? What kind of features they contain? They are brands that are authentic. And we're going to talk about this new generation, brands that they are challenging the status quo. They talk about taboos. They are challenging the euphoria. Uh, this is one is a makeup brand. And it would be something challenging in the journey for the consumption, which is to remove the makeup by the end of the night. Well, why cannot I help this so it helps the skin care so I do not have to remove it during the night? The innovation of this product is to understand what the customer wants, what the customer needs to. And this other company talk about the lightness. They are also very light in terms of communication. They are very sincere and honest about the approach in social medias and sharing how they work, how they have worked during pandemics, what is the products they have, how can you use the products in a very fun and light way. So it relates to well-being, it relates a good time with your family, it's a great package so you can see and it's visually beautiful. So it's a 
a challenge. So I can start to think, what would be the role of my own brand in this? So of Lemet's brand here, it's a serial one, which was, well, I'm not going to sell in the traditional market. I'm going to distribute my products for gamers, for other communities, for music. Well, in this way, it can connect with this brand because of its values. And the kind of approach we have is bringing mental, mental health for teenagers. So it's completely different from what I've seen so far. So it's a serial company, but in the social media and in the content they share, it's a very more broadened connection kind of way they do. And it's about counterculture for art, for music, instead of regular and traditional retail. These bold companies as Starface, they are breaking through topics that are taboos as acne, as problems related to your skin. Well, instead of just trying to hide it, why can you not use a stamp so it helps with you with the skincare, but it also looks cute, so you feel good about it. So it's about the generation, this new coming generation. They are the biggest consumers in this. And here in the present, they are going to see this from now on even more with what would be the next generations. We don't know yet. But this generation is purchasing for the authenticity, for the truth. They purchase for values. It's for purpose. It's to be quite direct. It's not going to be just leaving behind everything they are consuming. They want to understand it with more clear way. 70% is going to take action in cause they believe in. Even boycott uh, a brand, they cancel, as we say here, a brand, if they understand that they are not following the values they have, if the brands they do not believe in. We can see this in social media and also that they purchase based in recommendations of influencers uh, about influencers we are going to talk about them too because it's not the biggest influence they are the smaller influence the ones that are people just like us just like you and me the smaller communities because they have credibility because i understand and i believe in what they are saying so how can we deal with this new generation is to understand that consumption as an access but not as owning it so it's a difference between being rare a product that is no longer available for much people but is now changing in this like in any place you can see it in any place you can see developed and in any kind of segment so the consumption is an expression of the individual identity the expression because well it aggregates as something about me so how can we express this in our approaches and also that is worried about ethics and well, if we are worried about it, because the topic is just not about e-commerce, it's much more about it. So the alternative commerce, well, it's no longer for the website, but a new generation that unites the entertainment integrated with the purchase movement. It's not longer about the website. I purchased directly social medias through metaverse. So this experience are engaging and in several segments so this is a tiktok video let's play it to see it because they are movements that are arising in tiktok as gucci we can see here and they created this to how they are dressing with gucci and this promotes the brand and the market in this kind of channel because you can see as in a playful way especially having an e-commerce platform that is integrated to the brand. So it's a community that's related to the 
the generation that is interested in direct to buy every product in the social media. They are no longer interested in the websites. So this is what we have to think about. Think about the experience much more than that. This is the transaction between errors, we can say. Just going a step further. But we have these changing that we, they were very industrial segments in which they have a sequence to be followed and now it's a knowledge era in which we are no longer just setting our knowledge based on what we sold last month because in the next six months it's going to be something completely different challenge so this is about our new insights we have to think about it in each instant and we have listened this for the bunny world is no longer no it's a changing one it's fragile it's anxious it's a non-linear world and it's no longer possible to understand in just one world and the difference between the acceleration curves of graphics the organization and in so much futures about the change we are facing now with the technological advance and that is changing every single segment we have now and this is a growth that's 10 percent a year and when we talk about this exponential curve is that we have to have a growth related to 10 percent we have to increase even more the acceleration and also separating all the segments so there is a segment that is no longer in located here in the vortex but we still we are managing brands with the mindset from the previous century and i like to think about it because there is a, a classroom that i teach that is related to the the pillars for social for environment for all the awareness we have related to the business and i like to point out that the digital world has broadened our consciousness for the collaboration for the possibility of having so much i can no longer sit and just look at myself in the mirror i have to see how i connect with all the systems around me how can i live as an impact for the generation for the society so it's a different kind of market in which i have to align to different partners marketplace ecosystems partnerships being made between companies precisely because we have what the digital world is requesting for it they are not there just for selling we are aggregating and delivering values we are building something more bigger than this and talking about the business transformation because they change the foundation of the whole business when we talk about it we are no longer seeing as a single line and we think about nets networks what are the allies what are the networks that we can associate to so we can be more present and delivering more value during the journey where we had things that were so much metric now this is what's going to ensure that the lifetime value is related with my own purchase throughout the time and it goes to a metric that's very important and the management culture and here we're talking about from small to middle-sized companies and they are very favored by this model we would not have fixed hierarchy based teams but we have these mixed network based teams so everyone is collaborating online and they might need my skills and that's the work of the future we would have module on demand teams and a strategy where i used to have a a uh, vision of protecting my resources so that we could have a uh, protected base plan in it. but now we would have a new asset based strategy and that those assets would be built all of the time 
and now the operations have smaller circles with a view with a vision that is a long-term vision and in this case i'll be feeding back the process with the learning with uh, continuous learning and when we're told about this digital transformation this is what it all uh, involves and we it, it involves the way I sell and how I relate to other people. And uh, Alvin Toffoli said that the illiterate of the 21st century is, is not those who, uh, is not that who cannot learn, but that who cannot unlearn and relearn. So this is our constant in the future. So, and we have here five mantras of that digital transformation. And I provided with a few examples. And we believe that those are the large steps for us to take to be prepared for the new times, we have to be passionate about the customer. We have to be obsessed about reducing frictions, everything that might become a barrier in your sales process. We should be obstinate about delivering more value and that relates to our enchantment metrics and all uh, metrics and also to the branding metrics. And we should also be brave to innovate because in many situations, we will be forced to innovate, and we should also be an eternal apprentice. We have to be humble enough to learn, because we will have to learn about 5G and so many other technologies that will come in the future. So, and when you talk about being passionate about the future, we involve data. And this is the larger center of a win in mentality in this digital transformation. So it comes from having a deep knowledge about who you are serving. And this is valid for both B2B and B2C. So we have to think, what are the needs and what are the drivers? What makes a difference to my customers? And not only in the relationship of just buying a single a product, it's not about that. It's about understanding what the challenges are. What is the point? of my business where I can help you with. So what is the relevant that I can deliver you um, with in your business? And that's the point of the customer uh, centricity, like having the focus on the customer because everything derives from that. We should understand that at a very first stage and we should also be able to work on that. And then we have a very important CRM uh, data structuration works that goes behind it. That does not have to be complex. We just need to have all the transactions and the entire relationship with the customers and how I can capture the information being handled properly and how I can create even more knowledge about the customer. And I will bring some examples for you. And one of those is related to Casas Bahia. And that was a great example. And of course, we are talking about a large uh, retail company. It's just a cell phone that was given to the sailors, sellers, and they were able to make the sales right on their mobile apps. And they were qualified to respond to and to and to fix the needs of their customers. And what is cool about this is that in the beginning of the pandemic, many people were scared about how to handle with social media, like in WhatsApp, how they could um, provide their credit card number. And those sellers were like consultants so that these people could be digitally um, introduced. So they could be introduced by uh, to the technology. And this is a way of selling more. And they eventually created a very powerful relationship tool and from the moment when i start relation uh, relating with the uh, seller and said okay i just bought a a stove and i can then take a photo of that new stove that came to my place and send that photo to my own seller and that would not be possible if we just had the in-person uh, face-to-face interaction we have to have this new mentality that uh, we also have to make sure that we are not losing anything going digital. And we also think about this collaboration aspect of digitality so that we can reach our potential customers that are on CRM or who, follows, uh, who follow us on social media so that we can create environments to foster that interaction and just uh, 
to provide with information if that product uh, and produce uh, makes sense being produced. If I have some um, people saying, okay, this is relevant or not, based on that, I can figure out if I should or should not produce my produce. And here we have an example from Impulso, which is a, a Brazilian startup for technology that uses social media for another cosmocentricity uh, perspective, which is the developer uh, community, because they have to have these people as their allies. And just think about your reality as uh, seamstresses, as um, bread makers. So what do you have to have in order for, uh, in order for your business to grow? So you should have environments where we can get information uh, about relevant content for your personal development. So you should see it. I mean, your uh, so uh, your corporate social system. Who are the partners that you should have as your allies and enchant them? We should be obsessed about reducing frictions relate to that journey of mapping the digital experience of the customer. And when I do that with this consulting process with startups, we first of all have, uh, we get to know the customers and map the behaviors, like the creative personas that uh, is our uh, motto here. And we should identify who are the types of consumers we will be relating with. And here we also consider how we can put ourselves in those customers' shoes and uh, go through the entire purchase process from beginning to end and figure out where we would have uh, any failures, where we can improve. And those are very simple exercises that generate and add a lot of value to our perspective on the digital experience that we have to serve our customers. And here we have a study from Gardner that brings these uh, this data in our new times. It's not only about selling in, uh, products or uh, offering service. We have to enchant the customers when we get to the top of the pyramid. That's when we start creating this engagement level that is so deep that people uh, start feeling better or becoming better because they are using our products. And that's the purpose of it all. So that we can have this deeper connection about the meaning of our products into people's lives. But we have, throughout the transaction process, many, many barriers. And that's called uh, friction. We have the um, post-market process. And then you start mapping that. We start identifying that that's have been easy to know when my product is coming at the right time or it was easy to replace my or to return my product there are many points that uh, may offend the experience of the customers and then whatsapp and geomart which is a supermarket chain in india they've created a purchase process which is 100 percent integrated through whatsapp it's no friction it's a no friction process it's very easy and the biggest point of that was having the integration of the entire um, indian population was uh, could that be as easy as exchanging whatsapp messages and dango is a chocolate a store i'm not sure if there's anyone uh, familiar with that store so what could they do during pandemics because all the, because of the store was locked out and in this case what did they do they create a virtual store with a virtual uh, consultant explaining what the products were and you could make your purchases through whatsapp or through their own platform therefore creatively speaking they just put a camera of course we could escalate that with the higher or lesser degree of sophistication and in this case we would have this relationship with the customer present the customers that were on the shelves and how can we use our creativity and 
that was their solution. You also have the HubSpot, which is worldwide uh, known, and they are a very good B2B example that think about experience, where they have all the features, they have the many possibilities of contact they can have with the customers. You can call, you can uh, chat with the agent, we could have a demonstration of how you can uh, see how the services work, you can talk to your sales reps, and we have a very super user-friendly chat box that explains everything about the process. And this is the sort of experience on their website that might seem basic, but a few people are concerned about understanding how their website and their digital environment is open or welcoming to whoever is accessing you. And when we talk about delivering more value, we talk about experiences. And this is one of the greatest, greatest experience of the digital transformations. As, as the digital environment gets this relationship role, this human connection role, as we saw with WhatsApp, so the physical environment has turned into an environment with another role. So what is the physical environment that I should have with my customers? And many people think about that enchantment, that relationship with the customers, and that would create loyalty and loyalty, and the consumer would not be willing to uh, get the product, to buy the product anymore. They want to become the product. Like we have a uh, an American shoe brand that has a very strong social pillar. So whenever you buy a pair of shoes, a portion of that price is given to uh, lower income community, communities. And this is an experience that is shown in video as a uh, augmented reality video. And you can see the product being 100% delivered to those lower income communities. And the effective uh, or affection link that you created with the brand is very strong. For instance, if I go to the GAT pyramid up top, that makes me feel good buying that sort of product. Or we have this karma from Kip Kimpton. And here we recognize the experience not only by using the, the uh, uh, hotel pro product and services, but also uh, an expected experience there you that you can share in your social media, like you are performing your yoga practice in your hotel room, and one week later, then a message is sent from the hotel to the customer saying, "Okay, thank you very much for uh, being part of our experience journey." And that that customer is sent a yoga mat, for instance. How can you? uh spoil the customer like sending the customer a voucher that acknowledges that experience that is being published on social media for instance so, so these are other forms of doing it and not a regular point-based or loyalty point program and we also have shane which faced also the pandemic challenge. It started uh, holding these live shows in entire uh, textile and fashion related uh, teams. And I am very fortunate to assist Farm, which is a very important fashion brand in Brazil that has just gone international and how we can uh, develop the, the brand in terms of relationship and develop and explore other forms of communication like using shows uh, discount coupons who are watching the event at the moment so that we can send them their uh, an off price tag and we have the products from farb that bring the live commerce uh, video from time to time and these videos show how they assemble uh, store and how the sellers sell the products and you also have the role of those sellers whenever goes whenever someone goes to your store and know and learns more about the products more than your sale uh salesperson does and that means that well all the information about the products 
but those products are online. And when the customer comes to your store, they know more about your products than yourself, perhaps. So the sellers should have another role, a more consultancy based role and how uh, and to know how the retail works. And we also have the enchantment for B2B. And the most successful B2B companies also look for that higher connection, leave a more human connection. So they want to have this higher price that will be paid. However, that would relate to a brand that has a value. So how can you take care of the reputation of your business when you make a business with another company, for instance? How is your LinkedIn profile? How are your social media performing? How is your website performing? Because those are your uh, showcases and people would like to know who is behind those business businesses and those brands and this is one of our of our examples feeds which used to be an accelerator and i was fortunate to help them build the culture code and they have a very interesting movement for hr they sell services for hr management and they've created an event, a proprietary, proprietary event for their potential customers. And in this case, we do have an approach of getting that relevance for your company that would eventually strengthen the reliability of your business the more you offer. That means the more you offer content and information, curatorship of different topics that have to do with the community that you are serving. Well, this is something that is very interesting, a uh, very interesting way of using those tools for your marketing process. And we should also be brave to innovate. And in the beginning, as I said, we are at a point which is very important for us to no longer see retail as a break, mortar and brick store only, but a multi entity system based entity and therefore these companies can offer a higher value to their customers like magazine luisa and uh, magazine luisa bought a number of other businesses that you uh, were not related directly to magazine luisa to magazine luisa's business but in this case they start aggregating or adding those other companies because these other companies will be relevant to their final business and uh, we are talking about animal products and people um, establishing partnership with clinics and pet shops and dog uh, dog healers and everything that I'm telling you based on this journey, on this experience, involves who is uh, the person or the entities that you can uh, establish a partnership with. And if you could do that uh, with these big, com big companies or who else? like CNA, because they have a specific website for selling their own products and they establish its partnerships with uh, pre-owned products to be sold through those new platforms. So what are the marketplace platforms that we could use and relationship platforms that we could use and integrate to our business? And also the TikTok movement, for instance, that brings this um, TikTok made me buy it and how we could use influencers, use influencers to direct the purchase to these new generations. And therefore, the company started uh, creating these box to aggregate products and have a curatorship from those beauty products from influencers, for instance. And in this case, that specific boxes would be eventually commercialized on their platform. So there are many, many tools which are new to us so that we can explore on that new path. So to make sure we got it right, we have to understand how we can operate in those enchantment points. We have to devise our values and our beliefs. It's very important to work work on our brand so that we can understand where our differential is. We have to build our reputation on digital media. Like, who are you behind what you do online? What do your products tell about you? 
you should promote those commuters. And that's a very, very important point for that new generation. We should promote commuters, as I said, as impulse about farm. Those people believe in what you believe. And you should also invest in an interactive experience by integrating different digital channels. What is the role of Instagram or LinkedIn or else? Or another channel how you mix everything together and should define the promotional strategies in a more segmented way and uh, we should understand how the different profiles that we have the and what is the offer or promotion different that sales i can, I can approach in a way that i know it's it not being segmented is more and integrated for the the customers and to wrap up, which is the eternal apprentice. Uh, I was talking about this in the Subright channel. And what is the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge is to, to reinvent ourselves all the time, to open up our mindsets. Our technology is changing our hardware, our culture, how it's going to take place from now on. And we talk about the the understanding of it as the work, this jo the jobs, the type of professions, they are being changed so quickly in which the human is going to keep the emotional part, the human side and the machines, the operational part. So it's to change the transformation using our creativity to make different things, using our human side and to think about how can we make, create process traditions to not leave the daily lives engulfing us to make things as we always did and to make 10% of our time, of our investment, our focus to looking forward, to look at trend, a uh, behavior that's changing the world and to make new things. And I bring the podcast that I've been working on and talks about behaviors of the new professional part of this new time. And it's a leadership that is able to combine the rational side, but it's also able to balance the sensibility, the collaboration and the generosity. When we talk about it, it's share the network. And to finally wrap up, change is inevitable. Growth is optional. So this is the context I'd like to share with you. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if I'm running behind time here. We have a few questions here. So in this moment, I would like to first thank you for your participation. And as we mentioned, we have a few moments for question and answer. And also, if you are watching us via Zoom remotely, you can see the questions. And we are going to reply afterwards. Paula Gomes from Apex Brazil. She's with us in this moment for questions and answers. And if you're here in the present, you just raise your hand and we can reach the microphone to you. I'm going to share a question from Suyara. Uh, she's following us online and she's asking, Andrea, how can you measure the influencers' strength in international markets? It seems to me that the other markets, they are requiring more from the influencers, something that from the communicate and not just a number of, of followers precisely. This is the influencers that we talked about, the smaller influencers that they are right, quite relevant in that specific market, in that specific sector. From the moment you understand who we like to serve to, we have this understanding that the communities outside Brazil or wherever you like to make your strategy, what what they are doing, what they are delocating, 
what kind of behavior they do. So I'm going to understand what they are doing, what type of consumption they are attracted to. And obviously, biggest influence is a greater challenge because of investments, but it's a very important way of advancing. And they are also opening up the paths for new markets, for new brands. Farm is a great example in this. And by the way, uh, the influencers are not even getting paid because the brand is so cool, so a good vibe that they are participating in this. It's organic. Hey, I would like first thank you and congratulate you. We are receiving so many comments here through chat. Bruno thinks that's fantastic. And Will has a question related to cancellation you mentioned briefly. The cancellation could be briefly and it's visible in the social media, for instance, losing followers. But in terms of real terms, what would be, what would mean? We see the companies like Victoria's Secret for Abercrombie, companies that have suffered this and they have suffered from the real life. The results, it's dropped a bit. So it has to be quite careful. So we have to be responsible because in fact, going should get a different go, a different result. To make a change, to disconnect from that movement as a rebranding. So you can step up the business in another vertical. So there are things that could just be briefly in terms if it's not something really important, it's going to pass the time, but it's not going to be a huge impact. But that there are examples that is structural. Friends that are not able to follow the, the society change from stereotypes, for paradigms, for racial issues, for gender issues. If you do not have this mindset, this is going to take place. You're going to get cancelled and you're not able to, to walk through. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you. Well, our sincere congratulations for Andrea to be here with us today in the third edition of this event. It's quite inspiring to listen to you and thank you everyone watching us live. In this moment, we are going to move forward for the opening ceremony for the export meeting 2022. So now I invite for the stage to now Apex CEO Augusto Pestana, please. Também. Also, também o presidente do Sebrae, senhor Carlos. Sebrae CEO Carlos Melis. Also invite CEO ESPM Dalton Pastori. And VP from Inactive, Leonardo Elias. Muito bem, então, para oficialmente dar as boas-vindas. So, to officially welcome everyone here, I'd like to invite for the next words, ESPM, Dalton Pastore. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone and welcome to ESPM. For everyone that's watching us remotely and welcome to ESPM. And thank you very much for here. It's a great pleasure to have a kind of event like this for two reasons mainly. The first one is an event that appreciates knowledge. And here we think about to generate knowledge. A school is not only about transmitting knowledge and generate abilities, but to produce knowledge itself. 
And this event, as we can see, it's producing so much knowledge and it which is relevant. The other reason is because ESPM was born with a purpose, a goal to create here in Brazil in terms of excellence in all the areas of action. And notably for marketing, which was our starting point. And from since day one, it's our main goal here. But we forgot that ESPN business that are manifesting in marketing and management, international relations, corporations. It was something, a step quite bold, if I may say, around 71 years ago, when we talk about it firsthand. And 15 years ago, we created a business school for international corporate focusing on business itself. So it was quite pleasant to hear today in events such as this one, because it's part of our purpose. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome everyone here today and to place ESPM at disposal for Apex, Sebrae, and for all people here to generate knowledge. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everyone. So our thanks for from Dalton Pastori, CEO of ESPM, and now with you, the Chamber from Brazil. Good morning, everyone. Initially, it's so great to be here to hear representing the Brazilian Chamber for Digital Economy. And I want to thank everyone here sharing the stage with me and especially ESPM to receiving us with open arms and Sabrai with his uh, long-term partner for Camera Inet and Sabrai too. Inet has born with related to electronic commerce and talking about it, we have a very important initiative, which is the the new cycle, which is we would take knowledge for several entrepreneurs, people that were starting their entrepreneurships, and in all these Brazilian states, we were very glad to see that Zebrai and Apex were our partners contributing directly to this business, and we graduated 80,000 people working in the e-commerce. One of the cases that is a reason for our pride is Netshoes. Netshoes has started this with the new cycle. And since on, well, you all know the story. The ENET chamber has noted in the last few years that specifically working only for e-commerce would be something quite small for us. So we decided to change our name. It's no longer for electronic commerce, but a Brazilian chamber for digital economy. That's why our name changed. And from that point on, the focus of the forum that we have this week, the INAT chamber has recognized by OCDE as the biggest authority here in Brazil related to e-commerce. And especially related to the quality we have, so we are associated to several assets, several teams. One of them that we can highlight is, is Facebook, Amazon, Mercado Livre, iFood. Well, all big players from the e-commerce are working with us. And still, talking about the big picture here in Brazil, and also taking a, a look at the international point of view, we can relate to the contribution that we have for the national one, for the signal, electronic signatures. And from the results we got last year, we have the cooperation agreement for all of the electronic signatures in Mercosul. This was something that we are really happy to hear about. 
And still today, we are part of the central bank, the open bank committee, and they are open finance because now we can have the opportunity to modernize it in terms of the financial market here in Brazil, also insurance for the open insurance, as an example. And we are going to make an exchange program between Camara Inet with the IDGECO, which is a meeting between several chambers from the e-commerce and digital economy here in LATAM, representing Brazil. In this point of Mercosur, it's going to take place in Uruguay. I would like to invite you for everyone so you can know a bit better about work to follow us in our social medias. We can share every information, all the works, all the projects that are performed inside our committees. And once again, I would like to thank the invitation for this amazing group we have today. And I'd like to wish you a great week ahead. Thank you. Oh, thank you for Leonardo Diaz, VP Inetti. And also, we are going to invite the participation of CEO for Sobri. It's a partner for Apex in several projects, and including e-export. Ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Melis. Good morning, everyone. For all the friends that we are here present, and also for the online ones, it's a pleasure to be here today presenting Subray in this event. And I saw Dalton talking about ESPM. Well, it's been 15 years since I graduated. And I am so grateful for ESPM because I have also a son graduated here. And the revolution to model that you made here in all these years of awakening the importance of the area of this section being market, being business, advertisement, something that's in enchanting us. It's so positive. So it's great to hear be here today, but I talked about the effects and about the ambassador. The Itamaraty is naturally kind because it's very skilled and the diplomatics here in Brazil, I would like to highlight this point is that the diplomats we have, it's one of the most important ones in the whole world. It's not something that we can just take for granted. So they are well prepared, they're competent. And I, coming from this, from a coffee brand market, we always worked together with Itamarati, and I've learned so much from sugarcane and something that's from 50, 60 years ago. It would be modern for the time, but we're going to talk about this area, about the scenario in Brazil. But Ambassador Pestana, well, he made the first lecture talking about our numbers. We have with Apex the feeling and the partnership very close to one another. We can say that Apex is a rib for Subri, but we are stronger together. So in this meeting, we can talk about the event and the importance of it. Leonardo, thank you so much for our partnership and how much is important for us to be and remain together. I would say that Leonardo mentioned there are considerations of two. I'd like to ask you in a very simple manner that you would use what Sobri has to offer. It's not good, it's great. And I can say because I've worked for it for so many years, 
But now I would say that managing sobriety is magical. The methodology is worth saying. It's very positive. So, Leonardo, thank you so much for your words and the partnership. And here virtually, we can say that, well, it's so good to be here and to have Tamarati here with us in this challenge. I like so much to listen to Andrea. Sebrae is working with this in Brazil and the whole world. Every time Sebrae is demanded by you, by the competence, by the knowledge, Apex in the same way. Our biggest challenge is to take the experiences we have, the knowledge we have for you. I would like to share uh, that the biggest capital we have in Brazil, and I have zero doubt regarding that, is the entrepreneur capital. And a research mentions that since 30 years ago, mentions Brazil as one of the biggest goals. First dream of the Brazilian is to travel, and the second one is to entrepreneur. So, well, it has begun to set 30 in the past 30 years, and this is what distinguishes Brazilians. And if we talk about that, and based on what Andrea said, that during the pandemic uh, events, and I will touch that a little bit, because, well, as I said, I am turning 50 years of undergraduate. And at that time, we had a, a program with the Bordeaux University. And there we had 50 professors at the university, and they spent uh, some years there, and then over there, and the um, French professors came to here to Vistosa, and it was distinction dealing with these people, and they provoked us in the in the booklets that they had for sales, for instance, and they uh, told us, "Do your people sell this way?" And this is what we experimented back then, and. We had to build trust and work on how we would work. But now, during the pandemic, we lived a dilemma in the past four years for Sebrae, which um, I will explain the reason of that. So, in 1995 to 2005 or six, we have the general many to small size business. So we had a challenge, but that was not formalized. So everyone was not uh, formalized as a company. So we had over 1,700 companies that did not survive after the inception. So, and this is why I value our Congress a lot. And they gifted Brazil this act, which created the simplest taxation regime for our companies. We have 7.5 small to middle-sized business, and we are 14.5 uh, million MEIs, individual companies. So those people who would not want to have a boss and want to work on their own and rely on their own initiative and work um, and people who want to work at you know, in different positions and these people can work in different fronts during the day for instance yeah, i'm not sure who said that but that uh, relates to our legalization this october we will be able to approve the micro entrepreneur invoice. And in order for you to understand the dimension of that and the social reach of that, we couldn't work with these people. And yes, Daniela Marx said that uh, 
ask for Sebrae's help because Sebrae is the tool that we have to help women to be entrepreneurs. And I, I say that Sebrae is not only the arms, but also the legs of Brazil for that. And we have over 7,000 collaborators that are very well employed. And Pestana, my friend, I will use this opportunity to make you this provocation. But it's not a provocation, but it's just something that we have between us. And I am just mixing topics just for you to grasp the importance of what I say before I forget it. And it's very important for people to be formalized as entrepreneurs so these people could be qualified for that. And we used to be traumatized by those problems and also because of the reform of our social security system. And the largest social program in Brazil was the Fund Rural, the Rural Fund. There are many million people who have retired without contributing to the social security system. And we needed to change that unbalance that we used to have. But when this general act came, the first assumption was that you should contribute to the social security for a certain number of years, either through the MEI system or otherwise. And Theoretically, we'd have some million Brazilians contributing, but the MEI might be a non-active percentage. But what I mean is this, this formalization gave people the opportunity of generating a social reach of these people. And in this case, we have an agent at Sebrae. So Sebrae works with programs and projects. And in line with cooperation agreements, the ones like the one that we have with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with APEX and with Ministry of Economy, with the Ministry of Communication, with the Banco do Brasil, the Bank of Brazil, and we have these committed of providing rural schools with internet connection. And in a nutshell, this is something that we are working on at Zebra. So we've changed the way things went. I do not, uh, I, we do not want to, uh, to have a Brazil that Zebra's needs, but we want to be the uh, Zebra that Brazil needs. And I think that's important to note to discuss it here, because here we are offered the opportunity to place that provocation to Sebrae of that hand that is being offered to you, that is being offered by us at Sebrae and also by Pestana and other people. Because when we establish those agreements, we create a, a force or a network, as it was said here, which supports us formidably. And the local innovation agent, we are talking about 1,300 that are present at Sebrae or have been present at Sebrae for 14 years. And that involves visits to the commerce or the industry in a visit, we have the different sizes of companies. Whenever those who come to the small size companies, we have the presence of that agent. And that takes place with the commerce, with the agriculture, and also as a service sector. And then Sebrae based on that. And along with the government, we decided to, with the CPEC, which is our closest partner. In four months, we managed to hire 5,000 new agents. So we are multiply, multiplying those agents. And briefly speaking, we are territorial development agents by providing orientation or guidance to the development of those cities. Since uh, governmental uh, procurement 
that would improve cost reductions, but also in the qualification of entrepreneurs. And those territory development agents would be part of those 5,000 new agents hired. And then, as I said, we have these entrepreneurial education agent, which is a more business-related agent, so that uh, it um, these agents could raise the awareness that business should be profitable. And the best part of it, and this is parentheses I make, that I make here, and that means that when we take 2017, we used to have back then 14% almost 15% of unemployed people during the 2020, sorry, during the, uh, the crisis. But in 2019, we had 9%, so the curve went down. And then the pandemic struck, and we went back to 14%. But now Sebrae has a metric to offer you with a team of research uh, scientists and engineers so we've developed this database that is open to you so that we could have access also to the, our infographs and, but no, no, we are getting to nine percent of unemployment and we are hitting the year end with eight uh, percent rate of unemployment it's very good and a great deal of that relates to the qualification of the entrepreneurs and some a portion of those uh, companies, sorry, um, employments that are created are due to the qualification of those entrepreneurs. So a, a sector that's responsible for the, uh, the popularization of former employment contracts. And also we would have the ability of people becoming their own bosses. And this deserves our attention and our vision. And these territorial development agents and also the entrepreneurial education agents and also the alley as we said before and we created a new agent role which was the credit agent assisted credit agent it, people you don't know how miraculous it is to teach a child how to write so we explain what fixed costs are, for instance, so that entrepreneurs are getting a clearer view about the business. And you should um, see how much you get your merchandise from, uh, for and for how much you're selling it. We've never seen nothing that positive before. And we are putting over 1,000 educational, uh, financial education agents at this assisted, or it's not a guided, but uh, an assisted teaching session. And I am sure that I am, uh, I did not comply with our timetable here, but our chamber is also to praise because you are here and this is not something that is teaching only, it's much, much more than that. I was born when we had uh, teaching and uh, extension programs at universities, but I, first of all, would like to think about that, but I did not think about that before, but what did we do back then? 9% of Brazil, 99% of Brazil is related to small to middle-sized companies and over 50% of the employments come from these small to middle-sized companies and a great, a great deal of our GDP comes from these middle, small to middle-sized companies and the simplest taxation or simple taxation system is almost hand in hand with the actual profit taxation system and also the assumed cost, uh, assumed profit taxation system. And we showed that uh, charging less for the products and making people formal in terms of employment and entrepreneurs are positive. 
So with that, Mr. Investor, I'd like to thank you. And I would like to say that we should put a good number of export agents available. So let's join forces because one of the issues that we had is that uh, Apex is assisting over 20, 2,500 people, but we we have many, many companies more. And as I heard before, and this is something that I have to add here about the fears about the crisis and opportunities. And we used to say that we should go digital. We should work on the net. And during the pandemic, we were forced to do that. And someone might say, okay, I'm not digital. And then we saw that 33% of people were selling through uh, WhatsApp and uh, another number of people were selling through Instagram and Facebook. And as for the magazine, Luisa, and uh, well, the owner of magazine, Luisa is like a sister to me. So Fred can say that things might not be successful at a first point, but Luisa said that she is a fruit of Sebrae. And she told me, so in order for you to sell at Merck, they will charge you 15 to 20%. And then we should be starting the, the first three months charging nothing and then charge a little bit more. And we will do it in addition to the small companies to sell through Megalu. And if they sell what Megalu sells, then these little guys will get a commission. And that happens to Americanas, to Mercado Livre, and that's a culture, and we will get there with you, with you young people. And I was really fond of hearing the word non-conforming. So this non-conforming aspect makes things happen. But we have so, so many good news which are also so strong and having that interest in such a good uh, entity with that power that makes me thank you, Mr. Uh, Ambassador, for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Melis, the president of Zebra. And now we are moving on to hearing the director of the commercial promotion of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Alex Giacomelli, who was not able to be here in person, but sent us a video. So the, the fast way that these digital technologies makes us, a, so we are aware that uh, t digital technologies develop very fast and as a consequence, that reflects the change of the world. Digital transformations, perhaps one of the key transformations of our time with important reflections in other sectors, like education, health, safety, and economy. In commerce, digital technologies have been transforming deeply the environment where companies operate. They've changed not only the way consumption takes place, but what they deal, as we know, uh, the economy digitally has accent, accentuated during the pandemic. And the estimate is that global sales of goods and services digitally have reached over 5 trillion US dollars in 2021 only, represented one fourth of the commercial flows internationally. Companies are always looking for ways that can increase their competitiveness. And in this context, we see the evident benefits of the e commerce as these virtual e-commerce tend to have a wider geographical reach and work 24-7. And in addition to that, e-commerce favors scale gains and access to highly technological services with high added value. 
and that contributes to your economy and exports to improve productivity and reduce commercial costs. It promotes a good environment for innovation and entrepreneurship. We are small, middle, and large country um, companies can have access to foreign countries. The Brazilian government, throughout the years, has tried to establish a network of electronic agreements looking for the creation of an open digital environment that is visible, non-discriminatory, and transparent. And we have the facilitation of transactions made electronic, enabling more trust to consumers and companies doing business internationally and online. And internationally, we have these electronic commerce rules because a group, because of that, a group of developing and developing countries have tried to bring up important and common topics to harmonize the world commerce with the participation of Brazil. The last year we signed the electronic commerce agreement with the Mercosur. In 2018, Brazil established its very first electronic agreement with Chile about these transactions. In 2019, Mercosur and European Union have completed the commercial negotiations dedicated to e-commerce. And in addition to that, we are having uh, associations with local partners in Singapore, South Korea, and Canada for e-commerce. And that will provide opportunities to strengthen our digital commerce, and that will reflect in our international agreements. E-commerce has created a revolution in foreign trade, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs could not be left outside of it. And the so-called digital transformation should be faced as an opportunity to expand our exports. And the reason why our ministry has tried to include that topics in everywhere it will operate. And I would like to thank APEC for the relevance and reach of this. When I wish you a very productive uh, National E-Commerce Week. And now we would like to invite Ambassador Pistana, the APEC Brazil president, for his words. Thank you very much for your participation, for people here on the stage to hear me. CEO Melis, it's someone that we look up to, that we know that you generate knowledge and shares the knowledge with everyone here and helps us to transformate the results and shape up. And I, I can say, well, with every single word and meaningful for me, thank you so much for it, because I know that we are going to make so much more for Brazil and Brazilian people. I'd like also to thank Leonardo from the Brazilian Chamber for the e-commerce. It's a pleasure to work with you. And let's keep working together. And also to thank for our ESPM CEO, Professor Dalton, it's a pleasure to be here today. Maybe, well, you not remember this, but when I was studying to pass into a college, but not sure, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to work with. And to think about all the possibilities, well, I ended up uh, being approved for law school and also here for ESPM. And then there is a factor that one thing is connected to the other. And the truth is, I was going to study in Sao Paulo downtown. And I also had a few classes here. But then we realized about the traffic here. And in 1979, it was as complicated as it is now. And I noticed that it would be difficult to to conciliate both studies. So uh, I also decided for, for law school, but I'm quite pleased to be here back because in a way I feel at home here and it's really interesting to connect 
you see, Professor Dalton, at that time, there wasn't a international relation course, but this is a, a news about this century, as you mentioned, 15 years ago. So we noticed that it's really interesting to note too. So that's why I feel really well to be back here, because here is a privilege to be here. And we know that APEX is cultivating this partnership with ESPM. And I thank everyone here, real life, my colleagues from APEX. As Igor Celeste, we work with him, as also Juarez, and so many other colleagues that I can see their faces here today. Other entrepreneurs that are also watching us remotely. So thank you so much for this. And I'll try to keep it brief as possible. And what I would like to share with you is that when we start thinking about the main goals for Apex Brazil, I would say that our goals that are permanent, especially for Brazil, Brazil that would like to go to international level and to relate to big players in the process for our increase of quality and specifically when we talk about challenges for apex and our priorities at the moment i would say that we have three main goals that are diversifications if one may say that for sure they're already taking place making a new way for the future so the first one was that President Malik mentioned to broaden our competition. We have so many companies here. Apex has some clients, and we have so many other companies in Brazil to export. But still, thinking about the potential, we have the potential of millions of investors, millions of companies that may be international and to export. And what's really interesting is to think about the broadening of the export is what's going to happen next? What's going to be the numbers? Well, it's what you mentioned. Are the micro enterprises, as we've seen this, that they are already present in the international route, but we know there is a long way yet to be made. And the second part to follow this idea for the exportation with micro enterprises. And we think about in the continental size of Brazil. So the size of our country, we have so much things of many states, of many cities, municipalities to export, which is fundamental to us as an agency. And the third part would be, is a transportation. We know that Sao Paulo and Brazil have a great economy. We have more products that are being exported for our industry, more services even, which is a great challenge because we have so many success cases here in Brazil. And we know that it's just the beginning of it as seeing Brazil as a bigger exportation of services. So this is fundamental. And of course, when we talk about more products, we think if it's going to support and be able to accommodate commodities. And recently is to aggregate products. This is the added value that we are focusing. So having more companies present in the e-commerce, working on marketing, we know that we have the conditions and the possibilities to go further ahead and to combine strengths here for, to achieve this potential. It's really important for Apex to think about it. And it's something that we do in our daily lives. And of course, of course, which is the logic that Brazil was, has been, and will continue to be with a bigger concentration. We are global traders. Every region, basically, in the planet. And it's not different. Our goal here is to open up the external markets and we get the aid for the agency for markets, 
especially for the biggest markets, broadening our options here, but also establishing priorities, setting them is of extremely important. And here we are about to start a mission with Tamarati Apex and to focus on the southeastern south region of Asia to make more partnerships with USA, with the North America and Europe, China. So we would like to keep this and also to have so many destinations for our exports. And it's fundamental to see the public and the governmental work of it, as our friend mentioned here in the video presented quite before us. And thinking about all the ministries and the positions available for work there, the Agriculture Ministry is focused on this, and also our biggest responsibility is to contribute so entrepreneurs can take change and the opportunity for this opening of doors. Why do I mention these opportunities as Apex? To think about it, it's because we know, I think everyone here also know it's going to be quite clear for everyone here that we are operating in the level of the sector, but it's an important and fundamental factor for all these dimensions I mentioned. It's self-explanatory. The idea precisely is to expand, well, e-commerce. Do you want to expand your products? Same thing, e-commerce, diversification for the market. So we have here a central point for the e-commerce as a factor, as an engine changing and that Apex is focused on all strengths to change. As CEO Malice mentioned, we had an impulse during the pandemics, which was an accelerator. And I, well, we're going to think about it. We are consumers ourselves. So it's think about, it's good to think about the other side of the story. The first and the second ways, well, if you have children at home, you know how difficult it was regarding the teaching and the, the school. And we also had the perspective, well, to my, my wife and I, we would agree that our children would have their friends over and they were quite happy. But when I realized we had six children there, all of them, they were interacting the same the same game using iPads. They were not looking at each other. We stopped and went, well, it's great that we are using this, but now you are face to face. Take this opportunity. Let's take a board game instead. It's not a chess, but I realized that I was no longer as being updated for board games or any other activity that would put human beings interacting as human beings. So just to summarize it, well, when I mentioned that I am a man from the previous century, almost a, almost a student from the SPM, I think it's incredible to think about the board game from the Mesopotamia region. And I realized it exists, not only the board game, but the rules, which is fantastic. It's related to our knowledge and study of languages. Well, I thought about purchasing that game for my kids and, and you go to a marketplace, an electronic marketplace, and you see so many options from abroad and you realize how easy it is to purchase those products. But for my great surprise that that game I mentioned, it was produced here in Brazil by um, a toys company in the interior region of Sao Paulo state. And it was produced by another state, Santa Catarina in the region, in the South region. So it was great to see this connection all this happening and 
being available in a marketplace, but being from a Brazilian company. So all of these connections and networking, we can see it's between what is ancient and what is modern and futuristic. And now, and just something that I would like to leave as a message is that Apex and thinking about Sabrai and making us available and dispose of everyone here is that is to put Apex at your disposal for entrepreneurs. We have the export program, which is quite recent if you come to think about it. It is only five years old. So all the transformations that took place in this period of time and that take a different change, which is important to make the awareness for it. Many of you already know, but to think about it during this week in commerce, the awareness that we bring for this is fundamental, Professor Dotto, is that the generation of knowledge is something that I'm really proud of to see my colleagues here that are on the daily life of every qualifying action we do and also performing the creation of new channels of business, of platforms and sales promotions. But all of this is based on partnerships, networking, as I mentioned, the ecosystems. Apex is part of a major ecosystem. Surprise fundamental. Where is the SPM in this? Where is the Chamber for e-commerce? Where are the the companies, the enterprise, the, the key players, especially when we think about the micro enterprise? How can we export the products? And even here during this week, we're going to, as an apex, take new steps ahead for marketplaces and international ones even as Alibaba. And the idea is quite clear. We see that Paula is mentioning about the doubt. Well, should Apex take the step and create a marketplace? Well, it could be similar to Jeff Bezos, but now I think it's more competent. But if we sum up our efforts, there are already marketplaces. There isn't make much sense to invent a new one, but we can use this as an advantage in terms of logistics. We are focusing in having our strengths and Apex is quite pride, proud of making part of this network to work with this and having a new step for this evolution, as Igor mentioned too of the e-commerce being a revolution. I personally believe that we having an historic opportunity to take ahead the exportation opportunities, the diverse products we have, and also the destinations. How can we take Brazil to more places in the world, more brands related and taken to different places in the world? and being recognized the whole world. The conditions are quite favorable, I may say, and this is why we are all together for the same goal. I wish you a great week ahead, but all the other weeks and other months and years, because it's important to realize that they are processed. Process they take in the long-term period. We have to focus in our vision for the international commerce, it has this thing to bring us forward to the future. Some markets, they are not very well known. And now anyone recognizes that they are extremely important markets, but there is consistency and efforts involved. Apex is working in partnership with the government, with all the ministries, and also ahead and having a partnership with Sebrae and other entrepreneurs as we can conquer more markets and take Brazil throughout the world. Thank you so much. Nossos agradecimentos. Então, ouvimos a embaixadora Augusto. Are we thankful 
for Augusto Pestana, for Augusto Pestana. And in this way, we are going to start officially with the week. We are sure that it's going to be enriching in terms of knowledge for us in Brazil and the world. Thank you so much for all your presence in this ceremony. And we are going to continue with our scheduled programmation. Muito bem. Bom, mais uma vez, reforçamos a importância We reinforce the importance of this event and your participation in it, including those who are with us remotely. You was sent you were sent a link and therefore you can participate in the meeting through that link. And we have a tool in the chat box, the Q&A box, and whenever you can write your questions there, we will forward your question to our speakers, and we'll have another two, three panels during this week. But we'll have a whole week of discussions with a very rich agenda, which you can access through our official website and participate throughout these days. And from tomorrow on, our agenda will be transmitted only online. And this is the only moment when we'll have in-person audience at our studios and specifically at our auditorium at ESPM, which welcomes us in the city of Sao Paulo. And I would like to remember that this is the third edition of this export event. And here we bring you information, inspiration, and of course, connection. And now we are heading to an important moment of our event. And we will announce, or we have announced that Apex Brazil and Amazon Brazil are signing the renewal of the memorandum of understanding to uh, stimulate Brazilian export on Amazon.com US website through the Amazon International Sales Program. And for that, I'd like to invite to the stage the marketplace head of Amazon Brazil, Ricardo Luiz Garrido. And I would also like to invite the president of Apex Brazil again, Ambassador Augusto Pestana. Now the floor is to uh, is given to the Mr. Ambassador, uh, to our ambassador, and that memorandum is to be signed now. Thank you. Well, I really intend to be brief this time because I've just spoken at this panel. And I believe that I was very clear about our orientations and what these partnerships are all about. And Amazon is one of those companies that needs no further introduction. And I would say that even in those situations where we make uh, these uh, thoughtful references to a large Amazon consumer that I used to be, and at that time I used to be buying many, many books, and we've had such an evolution in this model. And this is a trend that will not stop, and this transformation has just expanded, and the reach of Amazon is huge. And as we said, we are talking about a platform that reaches the entire world approximately and using even more technology. And us here, and we at here, Apex, and I speak on behalf of my colleagues as well, it's a very important one for us to offer our customers this opportunity of understanding how these platforms operate and be prepared to put their products on that platform. And this is something that is very easy for the process. Of course, we have challenges, but it's not that simple, actually. But 
Preparation is key. And it's impressive how the world's doors open to Amazon and how we can get those through Amazon. It's a great pleasure to know that we will continue this program. When we signed that very first edition of the Memorandum of Agreement at such different circumstances, at the peak of that very first wave of the pandemic, and it's very positive to know that we are here with you in person and continuing with this partnership with Amazon. So thank you very much for being here. So now for a few words, we'd like to hear the marketplace head of Amazon Brazil, Mr. Ricardo Garrido. So good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here renewing and celebrating our collaboration with Apex Brazil. It's a pleasure, Mr. Ambassador, to renew that with you in person here. It's a pleasure also to have seen this section, this opening section, including Sebrae's president, Mr. Melis, with whom we also have an entrepreneurial partnership throughout Brazil that's been on for quite some time now. And it's very nice to see this entire entrepreneurship fostering network working hand in hand in many moments. And it's interesting also to remember how Amazon began. And interestingly enough, we've repeated the same projector began in Brazil 10 years ago. We launched the ebook store, the Kindle Brazil. So we started in Brazil from that, just like we had started 25 years ago in the US. And in 2014 and 15, we launched our marketplace for ebooks. And from 2019, we've expanded our logistics network, opening over 12 distribution centers nationwide in Brazil and expediting our delivery. Uh, deadline and we can over uh, now cover over 1000 towns and cities in Brazil and that number is increasing day by day and we have a very close attention to increasing our operation and our speed and our selection for the Brazilian consumers and at the same time we have something that is also very important to Amazon, which is the fostering of small businesses, the responsible for over half of the sales of Amazon worldwide. It's no different in Brazil. We have over 2 million small to middle-sized companies connected to our marketplace in Brazil. It's a significant part of our business. We have invested in training and in the creation of new services and in education so that they can add, uh, adapt themselves to e-commerce and have e-commerce adapted to these small to middle-sized companies. In the past three years, we've trained over uh, 130,000 entrepreneurs in Brazil through videos and other materials. And a year ago, we celebrated this cooperation with Apex Brazil. We managed to reach 800 entrepreneurs who watched our training sessions in that period, and a good deal of those are already part of our entrepreneurs in Brazil that sell through Amazon Brazil in Amazon.com in the United States. And these international sales programs is one of the main sales that we have, perhaps one of the biggest differences that we can offer to Brazilian entrepreneurs to have their um, business reaching a wider public and with no borders. Selling at Amazon.com through Amazon Brazil is a possibility that is a reality to any Brazilian entrepreneurs now with no need to have an account in the America, uh, American market and with the social security number, which is their so-called CNPJ number. And without any seller outside of Amazon and the integration is made uh, seamlessly so that local products can reach America with no problem. And the product is stored at our distribution center that Amazon has in the America so that those products can reach Ameri American customers. So we are here to bring these services to those who are interested. We will participate throughout this e-commerce week, not only by signing our 
memorandum of understanding for our partnership. And also we have a collaboration with our international teams who will be available during the workshops throughout the day and explain how the system works. And tomorrow at 9.30, we'll have a speech by Eduardo Las. He's the leader of our international sales team and we'll have business case of sellers from Brazil who got through the, uh, the American market through Amazon and they will share a bit of their experience as well. And that will continue. We will have more training sessions coming up on the 20th or 21st. We have our main uh, sellers connection in the year. We are announcing new material and workshops with our team so that they can teach people to work better with e-commerce, both locally and internationally. And this is a commitment that is for the long run that we have uh, with Brazil and the Brazilian um, small business. So thank you very much and enjoy this week. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, watch the signature of the memorandum of understanding between Apex Brazil and Amazon.com.pr. Ambassador Augusto Pestana, Pestana, Mr. Ricardo Garrido are now signing the Memorandum of Agreement to promote the export of Brazilian produce on Amazon.com website through the international sales programs that Amazon holds. Thank you, Mr. Garrido, Mr. Pestana. And now moving on with our agenda, our topic now is Metaverse. How can we make business on Web3? It's an excellent opportunity of getting updated about the web evolution and see what the opportunities for business that metaverse would offer us and that goes through amended reality games virtual technologies and virtual environments and mixed reality so i would like to invite mr fernando godoy he is the ceo of flex interactive and to moderate we would like to invite uh, uh, to invite mr rodrigo terra he's an ESPN professor. Hello, good, good morning, everyone. How are you doing? I'd like to thank Apex once again for these making this presentation available. Perhaps I'm, I believe that this topic is not quite simple, but I'll try to simplify it. I've been holding these speeches for the past few years because uh, it's quite not easy, but I've tried to be very objective and show you a strategy because everyone talks about murderers and who um, is um, asking about that. And we would like to, to explain what it is all about and how we can generate opportunities. It's not rocket science. It's something that has come to stay. And here you'll show, we are showing how we get into metaverse and how I can create a strategy and make business and what the opportunities are and what is the target audience. And well, I've been operating for over 25 years now in um, entrepreneurship and innovation and we are digital technology experts what we have as a differential we knew that metaverse would be a reality but not under that name we had this mixed artificial intelligence or meta reality technology that would be involved graphic animations whenever we bring everything together we are talking about the new experience that is created the metaverse was not just a technology but the composition of several different technologies within a gamified 3d environment which i will show you right now and here we've developed metaverse what is metaverse there is no uh, not a single metaverse we have several metaverse just like we have many several 
social medias, TikTok, Facebook. So we will have several metaverse, which is the one I would pick. And this is something that I'm talking about now. We chose to use metaverse as an education platform because we are talking about experience a lot. And here I'm commenting on a few pillars of metaverse. First of all, you'll customize your avatar. We are presented at metaverse as an avatar more fun or more serious one we have this 3d environment with a special audio and what is this 3d audio all about so whenever i talk to him closer than his sound is louder and as i get past him the sound is getting more distant and we have a hole that transmits videos from whatever the place so that the speech can be for instance be transmitted through metaverse i can measure people's knowledge either a collaboration or a, uh, an employee or a student you can get prizes because this is the way the new generation consumes and learns it's a game-based experience so we can model several 3d environments a futuristic one but the experience has changed and you can also open other metaverse so just imagine that i'm talking about a specific topic and we are getting that into the human body we are opening the uh, periodic table of elements or any other topic so this part changes our experience and metaverse is in this case in a classroom and here we have a multiverse but what does this have uh, as an important issue. So the experience in the transactions part has have changed, but we also have that in e-commerce. But what is different about Metaverse? And here we talk about 4% of the consumers are the so-called alpha generation that understand their consumers. And in order for you to get an idea of that, well, I'm not specific, talking about specific age range. Whenever I think about having some food, I open an app and order that food or Fortnite, for instance, can be used as a platform for that. I do not have to leave where I am actually interacting at the moment to order my food. It's very comfortable. And things evolve with time. In order to show you a very first metaverse, which is a, an application that you install, we have a metaverse that runs on the browser and we also have a 3d glass uh, virtual reality based so i showed you an application but obviously if i have these uh, ar goggles then my experience would be more immersive but i showed you a more regular 3d environment that can be created and here in order for you to have an idea so perhaps this is the most important slide so that it makes sense to me how I can escalate my business. Everyone will go through a similar journey on Metaverse. So first of all, uh, just like internet came out, all companies have this www website. Whenever you go to your social media, you have your account and on Metaverse, that works differently. On Metaverse, we will talk about how that works. And that means why am I on LinkedIn or Instagram? Because the audience is the one that I will to that I want to reach but that is not like TikTok I cannot discard TikTok and this just like metaverse and we are talking about a few um, social medias here in terms of presence because users are a metaverse and whenever they are walking by metaverse they will find your office or your arena of events and part two NFT with a purpose so last year we heard the reign of nfts and how do i get how do i become a billionaire by selling nfts selling nfts for instance and well that lost its purpose and now the dust is settling down and that is starting to make sense again and why should i have this nft for my business i'm not sure if we will have enough time to talk about that today but i'm open to you for you to ask me your questions but this entry into this nft part of the business should be questioned how would it bring any d benefits to my customers through metaverse and then we'll move on to a stage three which is the cape land like i'm finding a virtual land and build something 3d as a, in a game and whenever 
someone clicks on it, I create an experience. And then we have the Fistum. So what is Fistum? Fistum was created for people who are older than 21 who would understand why I would be purchasing something called NFT, which is a digital act. And what is the benefit that it would be on the physical world and on the We have the Milton Nascimento uh, concert that was commercialized through an NFT. And depending on the rate of the NFT, we would have different sorts of benefits like a t-shirt or visiting the artist at the dressing room. We would have different qualifications like bronze, gold, silver, diamond, and people would be purchasing NFT because of the benefits that I would get from it. In the world, if we agree on that or not, this is uh, the way the world is going to. So we have the statement by Schopenhauer that says that, uh, first of all, we ridiculize, ridicule what we want to contest, but every one of those new aspects have been contested before, and then it became something natural. And Web 1, and Web 2, and Web 3. So we still navigating on Google, which is Web 1. Media, social media is social media is uh, Web 2, and Metaverse is the third wave, Web 3. And it depends on the new wave. And where, for instance, am I getting my new restaurant established? whenever I want to have more people around. We will have different publics. For instance, we have a more childlike uh, public uh, audience at Metaverse. We also have different publics. So this is the analogy that I make with social media. We have our own public, our own uh, target audience, and how we would be attracting uh, this this audience to your metaverse. So we would be attracting those people to the platform that or has already a base of consumers. So imagine, so just that imagine this how is that the is way mapped, we map just like in the Monopoly on standards, the same cons from Google metaverse. Can you explain how this strategy is applied here? Here we have so many NFTs sold. So we are going to have a database for customers. Here we have already here. The central land, would, which be the acknowledged as the major one, uh, we can see that we didn't see much value added. And here we have an experience, a 3D experience, and B2C customers here. Here would be the for 21 years older, because they're already having revenue to apply. And well, my target customer is not here, but well, you're not going to dismiss 25% of population here. So a potent part here for point of conflict is that you don't need to have crypto, you don't need to have MetaMask wallet. We have more than 1 million, which has this kind of wallet. And I'm here, I'm not able to discard it. PayPal, Google, Apple Pay, you can purchase the credits, whatever you like to use. So when we talk about being present, it's your business, your market, then remember Monopoly. Well, we had the same kind of mapping. You can see that first you started with bricks and then houses and then buildings. Here is the same example. For instance, Rio de Janeiro. So you can see the structure first. And you may wonder how a company would be able to make revenue in the metaverse. I'm going to pay, I don't know, five, ten, thirty dollars depending on the location. Is it Rio de Janeiro? Is it New York? Is it San Francisco, but it could be any kind of metaverse. So you're going to have the, the stable coin. So every time you're going to have a, a combination between the, the coin and dollars. And then I can, sell, I can sell it. So you have the transaction and it's a non-stoppable one. Each region is one of T. The first experience is for the Americans. 
they start selling their products, their articles. So imagine your business, regardless of the size and sector, you can apply it in the metaverse from day one to day. Well, it depends from how much you can say, oh, is it futuristic? Is it too expensive? Well, but it's NFL. Well, they have already, but well, I have one to building in Rio and I can show you what's going to happen next to this. And here you can see the variation. The NFT is going to value more if he plays better and if it plays not very good, it's going to decrease. So here we can combine people that are going to relate to the game and also have the opportunity to spend the money here. So it's, this is a game, a 2D, it's not very complex, but when you click here is a stadium, an arena, and it's going to open up a marketplace here, a store here. It's not brilliant, but it works. So you can have transactions here. You can see here in Chicago, the street does exist, it's related to the Google. So this is how you're going to build your business in the metaverse. Based on experience, would be a 3D site. Well, we have transactions here. So imagine this is a tourism agency. But it's not going to be a problem if they're going to have a region in Upland. We're going to have the avatar, we're going to have AI, or it's going to be a salesperson. Well, we're going to have a new experience for the user. Instead of going and leaving a place, we have this experience. And then I can combine with other people that have the same interest. I can watch a concert, I can see a lecture here, any other content you may imagine. So let's see Mangueiro. Why do I bring this case here? Because we're going to release it. If I'm able to convince the person that enjoys Carnival that it's possible to use in any kind of business, well, we have here the example of Rio de Janeiro. It sold out in less than two hours. It was sold out. We are desperate to get a building for all world, around the world. And here we built an arena for Mangueira. It's not only for carnival, but for any kind of business. We are going to model it in 3Ds, your stores, your factory. It doesn't matter your business. And what we're going to do, what's going to happen next? They're going to use their avatars. And I can promote a lecture in something I'm specializing. I'm going to talk about exportation. I'm going to talk about toys, anything I like. And I'm going to attract different kind of community, people that are interested in this. And they are going to enter in the metaverse and watch a lecture. They are going to interact. They are going to purchase things, NFTs, that can get benefits inside the metaverse, a clothes, the the custom is going to be sold, also an NFT that's going to be used for the avatar or to watch Carnival live in Rio de Janeiro. And here, how it's going to work here. Same thing, you're going to customize your avatar. It could be more real, less real, but you can choose as you like. So I'm going to meet up my friends, and let's imagine that I am not able to attend Regenero. So you can see that there are still games here. You can even sell movements or even dances. So I'm broadcasting rehearsal for Mangueira. So, and you can purchase and watch the rehearsal. I can put stands here for the sponsors. So imagine your business. Well, I, I don't know how to dance samba, but here in the metaverse, I can know how I can do this. But by the end of the day, we are selling experience, connection between people and also making business. So let's imagine I have a business and we can have a kiosk here. We can have a salesperson inside Mangueira Arena in Upland. Does it make sense? Imagine the 
types of public we can achieve with that. It's the same thing with Gilgo. Before that, the ads, well, with five reais, you could get one. So depending on the type of experience you would like. So just to, to wrap up here, we can talk about education and SG, which are the topics that I think Metaverse can make a huge difference on. And also to make ESG. They are using a blockchain, and we can use the destination of the revenue that does not exist, exist yet. But I do not have this target at a percentage for educational projects. Well, if I'm not over my time, it was to share my knowledge for this strategy and the Mangueira case I mentioned, but it could be applied to any kind of business, any kind of company. And we can think about even think, what are the best metaverse available? We have the metaverse, and they have several ones inside. And at some point, they are going to be connected. How can I go from metaverse A to metaverse B? Well, for now, we don't have it. But at some point, they are going to connect. Like Google, Samsung, they did it. So that's it. I think ESG and education are ways, through ways that we can make metaverse work. Thank you so much. Here is my contact to reach out. And I invite Rodrigo specialized for we have a chat afterwards. Thank you. Sensacional. Amazing. Good afternoon. I was watching from the audience that to understand about the Fernando's point of view, because we know Flex pathway, and we can see a major evolution, especially in this connection between business. And I think the first question I would like to ask you, and taking the opportunity from our audience, the examples you provided, they are also related to content. And I would like to bring the yeah, the e-commerce, taking restaurant chains or someone that works with foods and drinks, is an activity that's quite physical. We are not able to drink light or something like this. And we are not able to see the direct benefit of it, to have a platform like this. I just got into iFood I food from... I restructured my delivery, and now we're talking about a metaverse. How can you see product that's just released to e-commerce? So the first step to the digitalization of its business, how it's going to be able to see this connection available for the metaverse? I think metaverse is more of a communication platform in which you can interact. We can say that we are experimental phase yet, but why don't why don't try give a try? I think companies should try one more ch additional channel. You can still keep your WhatsApp, you can keep your Instagram account, but even more, there are going to be new ways to interact with your target audience. And what kind of things would you like to make available for your customer, even though you're not in real life? So in this moment, Rodrigo, I think we, this is the, the right way. This is the only way. What worries me is that this is already taking place. So in the same way, I mentioned that I started working with websites in 95. And the last time I did it, it was 2005. So, so many companies took so long to make a website and now social media. So how many companies said that it shouldn't be working on, on the online version? And now the Web3 is the same thing. No one's inventing. So I think you should give it a try. I think you should also work for retail and think about the benefits. It could be redirected to the real life. Will I get a discount? Well, will I be able to watch a lecture from someone from the market? So you bring out the community together in terms of knowledge or discount, something exclusive. People like this. It's like the album secrets for the World Cup. So I think it's the best approach would be, I, I ask this for the audience, why don't you give it a try? 
But if you don't do this, someone else is going to do. Your competition is going to try. So let's try to think about it in process, little by little, collecting data around the, around 25% already part in these consumers. And thinking about another issue here that I've listened so much people sharing about regarding metaverse and communication, and also using a 3D language, the art, the real time, or any other feature that is a bit available to see there. And so many times I, I heard someone saying, well, if you think about the metaverse, but it's something completely virtual. It doesn't have this kind of connection direct to the real life. And you mentioned that it is, so, but my ability to see something in the physical world is to see how it can really is photorealism. So if I am inside a virtual environment, if you think about this, my expectation would be to see the light, how it reaches on the chair, the same way I have this in real life. Do you see an opportunity or, let's say, do you see an opportunity for this to resemble games? Where is the advantage to try now if the expectation of part of the businessman is it, is it going to be worth it to interact? Is it worth for the consumer? Well, I think yes. We believe in a hybrid method. We believe that nothing is going to surpass the physical world, the real class. But what would the technology offer that's so good as or even superior? Let's say if it's a medicine kind of school, I'm not going to be able to be able to do this in real life. But what I think is going to happen, the hardware is improving quite quickly. The experience is going to improve even more and more. It's not that it's not incredible, but imagine getting inside the gamification form. I think what people wish for, especially not even the gamification, we always put going after your experience. If we're going to travel to a concert, a lecture, the metaverse is not going to be any different from that. We are going to see that. So let's see, if it's a three to five years old, the 5G is available to solve the connectivity issue and the hardware. I think people are going to go after a new experience from the metaverse. Is it game? Is it an speculation? Well, for sure. But if we think about that people are being part of it as well, that's so nice. Instead of going to a website, I'm going to use my avatar and meet new people. You're not going to do that in a website, a regular one. You're going to see the 3D product. Oh, just purchase and you can interact with the other people there. The concept for the community is very good. If you are a gamer like Fortnite or any other game, they already have this concept understood. And we are still adapting to this new experience. Well, it's a bit of a, a teasing uh, question. If you think about games development, it's one of the markets that mostly increased during the pandemics. With our program for Apex Virtual Games, it's something that we're really proud of. And the question would be exactly, so many times we hear people saying that games uh, they are the foundation for what's going to be the metaverse in terms of technology, behavior, and consumption. As you mentioned, Fortnite or any kind of game for a multiplayer, multi platform in which you are able to play in any kind of place. All these technologies you've seen that Fernando shared for us, all those technologies were generated in the games universe developing games actually so obviously well we already have but it's not in a real scale yet but of course you know a few years from now we'll be able to get a go but not necessarily we do need this as you well said 
have 64% population here in Brazil that plays something, would be something on the mobile or something, a hardcore game, or that it's playing every game two, four hours a day. It's not related to age. We see this from 18 plus here in Brazil. So we have a, a different type of static or connection. This population is already used to or is already getting used to other types of interactions besides the physical world. It's already possible to purchase something for the game for more than 20 years already. So we already have this kind of habit in the population. The, the main next question would be, looking for the future, where do you see feasible the interaction in the metaverse? How can we be really accessing it? You may be mentioned five years from now. I'm being conservative. I think about 10 years from now. But what were you going to use to access or we are able to use for throughout the physical world? Is the hardware? Is it uh, a service that's going to be available in the cloud? Where are you going to be able to connect with this? It's a very difficult question to answer, to be honest. But if you have a VR glass, pair of glasses, the question is, we all keep the glasses for 10 hours? It's kind of difficult. But if you use for 15 or 20 minutes, it's an amazing experience. If there is someone that's using instead a huge screen with a control, it's also possible to use and others going to prefer to use via mobile. So we don't need to have just one pathway for sure. And the same kind that people like to watch Netflix on, online or mobile or the television. So when we think about the market for the new generations, because they are already most of them gamers, what kind of experience would they like? Is it from anywhere in the world? What kind of experience they would be able to? Or I'm going to change into a holograph image. Have you noticed how the people he is? Or we can make so many assumptions. Maybe sometime near from now, Apple is going to release their own VR glasses. So we can use the glasses for a specific situation, the browser for another kind of situation. So I think it's going to be purchasing for the experience. If you use to play Atari and PlayStation, what has changed? Well, oh, so much experience in terms of network purchasing things online. So it depends on the timeline in everything available in terms of money. If it's going to be a virtual reality for everyone, it would be amazing. But we are focusing on this like it was what mobile. And I think you mentioned, well, let's see if you have any questions. We have a few online questions. I'm sorry for interrupting you, but this topic is provocative. And I will make a few comments that came up. Marcos Silva, who is with us here, said that now I noticed that I am in the last century. So I've already heard about Merovis. I confess I didn't get the hang of it, but it's something that I still have to understand. And I will combine Suyara and Igor's questions related to the technology that has developed at a faster pace. And sometimes people are facing a hard time following that up using the smartphones and the cell phone. And how can Metaverse become more palatable to a public who is still not uh, used to those platforms? And we lived this pandemic period that caused us to be more digitalized. And the question is, will we um, slow down that pace? But we want to be together with the other guys on Metaverse, but this is my question. Well, Metaverse becomes more palatable as often as is experienced. So whenever someone gets into Metaverse and asks for the nephew or someone else for help, and 
that improves the experience. When If you do not get in metaverse and do not experience it, then it's no use. And for instance, if someone plays Fortnite, then that person can be familiar with metaverse and, and that possibility might be brought to your business in terms of uh, new experiences, what the benefits might have from these new transactions, and what we'll be promoting inside the platform, like exclusive things, and all the technology that is just launched is scary at the beginning, in the beginning, but then we eventually get used to it. And radio is still there to prove that. So as time goes by, people get more comfortable using those new technologies. So they should at least try that technology at least once. So a tip is for a small size company. So how could a small size company get into metaverse? Is that financially feasible for this sort of company? Yes, totally. So we have the land, virtual land that might not cost a thing or some are very cheap. The question is, what is the experience that I'm giving my customers? Just the NFT. And out of those four steps that I showed you, it depends on where you want to focus your efforts at. So you do have the NFT. You can design your platform in a certain way that you have to promote it. But otherwise, you have to uh, make very intensive promotion uh, effort for your company and that is what is all about how do i attract public or the audience to my metaverse profile so there are some lands that in metaverse that are more expensive like more expensive like 3500 years we have lands for different um, pockets and tastes so we should sit down and uh, make a research is this something feasible or is that for me you know so it's crucial that people research about um, the possibilities of uh, metaverse. So we have this very cheap uh, price for interactions. And I think that the history repeats here in this new technology as we had the stories back in previous waves. I believe that we might hear. I, I cannot uh, sta uh, keep up with what is going on because the changes are so fast that I cannot understand what they are talking about. Then, so, and uh, we also uh, we need web, which is one of the researches that we have. It is the disgrace virtual circle. So this disgrace virtual circle, and I, I believe that I have already talked about that at the ESPN. So in this case, you start the cycle by telling that this is something that will not be useful and then you change your mind and people say this is something that uh, might not be for me and that is very dangerous but as i said so perhaps that mentality will be changing as time goes by and people might say okay um metaverse will put an end to human interaction but then we start to understand it and goes and go to this very first beginning you might come to the conclusion that you might benefit from instance from nft but the benefit of it is there and the base of that technology is already available for you that is the base of web3 if we see the technology as the as the perspective that we have now, this might not work for some people, but internet in the 1990s cannot be cannot be used as a parameter for uh, analyzing what we have now, for instance. So it's not something related to Chrome where I would type a new URL, just imagine that I have to download um, Chrome for you all, Chrome for uh, Flex Interactive, and for geosites and so imagine that if we had to make that so if we have a look at this technology world that means if i can see people downloading metaverse and apps and uh, online as well i will not see any value that i would get from it if i started experimenting it and what we see things now is not what will happen in a five-year period of time. 
we we if we do not make our efforts to learn more about this new technology then we will go around that disgrace vicious circle and we will miss the opportunity of exploring those new technologies so we had to have this great radicalization during the pandemic so that everyone should or most people could get digital and the important point is we should not be aware sorry not be afraid of technology because many people play fortnite free fight and multiplayer games and the base of metaverse consumers behavior comes from the gaming world and i see it that we have to be brave about that ai is out there driverless cars will also be present in our lives if i do not make that a topic for our pub conversations then we would never get in contact with that new technology and what about the new tesla model we should not be experts but this is a topic that has to be demystified metaverse is the same thing there's no problem thinking that it might be or might not be um, the thing for you but you should not um, mystify it no, you can experiment it you can bring it to your business you can also use the open platform fortnite creator for instance where you can try we can start experimenting it even if you do not understand anything about programming there are many companies that can provide you with free guidance in that subject and do you have any further questions paula okay when you talk about a pub it's the mortar and brake bars okay yeah yes i'm i mean the mortar and brake pubs so thank you professor tara and mr godoy who are here with us and we have many questions and comments from the audience and on the chat box so and as soon as possible we will be answering your questions and this is a very interesting topic so this is just a proposal and from here we will be driving to other proposals but now resuming our agenda we will understand how this innovation and the technology as spoken here has impacted the, the commercial commercial promotion and how we can manage the transformation of this important transformation into going international we would like to invite uh, ESPM professor mr diego coelho please we would like to have you on stage and i would also like to invite to talk about this topic the senior assessor from apex carla giordani and victor milan from master int welcome ladies and gentlemen and now the floor is with our moderator hello everyone welcome to event you who are watching us online and in person and we have this influence from a marketing thinker that we contribute to the discussions at this digital transformation in sales transformations and of course we are here at apex who are, that is promoting the agreements and its own investment operations and we would also be promoting sales uh, promotion which is an important part of international intelligence of going international no company can go international without having this and of course digital transformation impacts that and well we've 
already visited many, many fears before we, uh, until we got to this forum. But this is something that has no comeback. And it is part of the industry 4.0 effort. We are talking about digital transformation and all in digitalization is not being on the web. We have to transform your uh, you have to transform your business model. You have to review your value chain, and it impacts all your business levels, and that interferes with uh, uh, leaner internationalization of your business. And here we have three different contributions. Juarez, who is presenting us the trends and rounds of uh, digital transformation from the Apex perspective, and also Carla, who will be talking about a sector experience along with Apex from ABI Calçados Footwear, and also Vito from Master, and who will provide us a real business case. And now I pass the floor to our speakers, and remember that you are my guests, and you can send us your questions through uh, directly through your um, chat box. And now I pass the floor to Mr. Juarez, if you feel free to talk on the public, Please do it. So good afternoon, everyone, to everyone who is here, who is here, here, and those who are with us online. And I would like to show you my presentation. Just a second, please. One of the ideas of this panel is to bring you a more macro view of the topics about sales promotion. And then our colleague from ABI Footwear will explain a little bit more about that. And then we will see what is going on worldwide right now. So this is a little bit about my experience. I graduated in MBA marketing, sorry, in uh, foreign trade, and then I graduated in MBA marketing. I've had over 30 years of experience in foreign trade, and I was fortunate enough to be in Miami, San Francisco in 2011 for some courses, and we eventually were not able to be there during the pandemic, but I will tell you a little bit about what I felt during this transaction. Sorry, this transition. And uh, pandemics accelerated digital transformation of companies and in directly impacted the way to buy and sell products and services international, internationally. So we have a very, an intensively uh, presence focused model that was our biggest business platform so far but when the pandemic struck we were forced to leave that uh, traditional model into a digital model and what we see now in mid 2021 and mid 2022 and when i came from miami i noticed that we had a great increase of e-commerce in the United States. The same thing that we are feeling now in Brazil, we used to have back then in America regarding the expeditiveness, the speed of the levers, and that meant that we had to know what is going on with the income. That's totally different from sales promotion. And now when I lived in San Francisco during the pandemic, we had a great challenge. And I had a company that worked with Walmart that had already been working on digital transformation for over five years. And when the pandemic struck, those people were very intensely affected. But we did have some people from the traditional business model who actually suffer a lot from it. All the test drive, for instance, the automobile industry, and they had no alternative other than close the companies because there is no public to test their products and exporters and potential exporters, for instance, is, um, they are the, the public for that. They must consider going digital in the way they make business. And both the seller and the buyer had to adapt to digital transformation. And I'll talk about behavior, for instance, we have a great fair called Nuga that we hold in Germany and it takes place every two years. So it's the biggest food event 
worldwide. The entire industry is present at this event. You have the sellers from all the countries trying to present their own products, and also the buyers are just visiting all the booths trying to find their offer. So they had this challenge. And when digital transformation came in, both sellers and buyers did not have their regular channels, but the need remained there. So they had to leave the traditional method of being at a fair and on a sales mission and find B2B platforms that were new to them. And now we see that digital um, transaction solutions gain new weight in the corporate strategy of the new business models that should emerge to ensure future sustainability. So we will be having different platforms where we have to be at, like Facebook, Instagram, we would need an e-commerce platform. You would be uh, required to be in several platforms to be visualized. So we had a very steep shift from the traditional model into uh, an environment where you have these the platform's giving you alternatives. So this is a very clear message to the export guys. If you just take place, take uh, if you are only took place in those regular events, that tends to diminish a lot in the future. And now we are talking about a new platform and a portion of your um, normal share is or will be migrating to the digital world. And Apex, as an agency, we have 370 employees, approximately. We have Brazilian companies and purchases uh, from Brazil and abroad. And we cannot meet our mission without, uh, I mean, by only being present at those events only. And we needed to have another model. And I bring you some of the solutions that we worked on during the pandem pandemic. And in 2021, we had over 852, uh, sorry, uh, 27 events or digital rounds. And we had over 852 buyers and 974 suppliers in 1,229 encounters. We had this intelligence that depends developed by our sales intelligence with over 70 million pieces of data with many, many companies looking for information on the platform. You only be doing export if you look for information at intelligence. And then I put some platforms through partnerships so that business could be well made. And so we have a uh, LendMe platform, which is a phenomenal platform. We have been working for a long time with this company from America, and we have access to over 70,000 buyers in America on that platform. But the registration uh, process is targeted to the American business. This is a platform. Uh, Needle is another platform that we developed in Europe. We also made uh, agreements with the Maison et Objet in Europe, and everything was put into a digital environment. We also established partnerships with Alibaba, Amazon, and Mercado Relief, and also established a partnership with this Global Trade Help Desk, ITC, which is a world platform where we did the entire translation into Portuguese. So we looked for those companies so that our customers could have different levels of access. And last but not least, we have to, we had to reformulate our entire Apex portal. We have an entire line of services and products that will meet your needs. Everything is guided to purchase to the buyers and not to the Brazilian offer, but that's based on the needs of our offices worldwide and on the CECOM. So the customer will see what the demands those markets have and how those customers can meet those needs and we've also developed the way we would hail, would hold our events. So in this case, we might have hybrid uh, presences, both in person and in So we've improved our uh, event relationship platform. We are developing our new Apex platform where we can purchase our products. And we also have uh, an extremely well-designed e-learning platform that manages knowledge 
of the of the knowledge of the companies. Everything that we understand about the market and our sectors is in this platform and totally available to you. And we also have an initiative coordinated by many uh, companies called Global Trade Hub, which will be launched in a digital platform where we'll organize the entire export and import services. So it's an initiative from Sebra IC and ICNA, the Ministry uh, of Economy and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We are going to collect all the suppliers of the digital supply chain. And so it's um, it's asking our huge efforts, but we are working on this multi platform where every customer may go in and be qualified to promote his or her company and use a concept that we are trying to sell. Like, how many of you have already used a .gov.br to do business, for instance? Yeah, if we have to be shot or if we have to have our ID cards issued. So we have over 120 million users. It's something unthinkable of, but that makes things easier to our customer and the customer. But I want my business to be that way. So this is the concept that we want to bring our customers as a single export platform where suppliers and the government and the buyers will be joining hands, joining effort, so that we can everything channel into these various streamlined platform. And so here we have my, you have my contact, my email address, and my LinkedIn account so that we can contact me. So thank you, Jordi. And as we here on the hybrid system. So, well, I have already used gov.br just to answer Jordi's answer and a provocation that I'd like to make to Jordi. That shows that the challenge that I have and Gustavo, as I said, we have the challenge, not only the, uh, the challenge, not only ours, but only of the entities that support those efforts, because these entities also should go through the sector entities as well. They have to go through those challenges to become digital. So people, good morning. It's a, a good afternoon, actually. So it's a pleasure to present our sector activity. And I'm talking a little bit about, about our own sector, because this has also been a challenge for us for quite some time now. So we grew a lot during the pandemic, actually, the Brazilian footwear portal, brazilianfootwear.com. So speaking about myself, I graduated in foreign trade from using me, uses Unicinus, and I've been working at this sector for over eight years now. And I'm responsible for the markets in Latin America and UK, in addition to the digital platforms of Bicalçados. So, talking a bit about Abi Calçados, this industry was created in Novo Hamburgo in 1983, promoting the shoes here in Brazil, not only in Brazil, but also internationally. It's based in four pillars, representation, defense, development, and promotion. The sector, sector for shoes in Brazil is the biggest fifth. It's the greatest one outside Asia. We produced approximately 25 billion. We are also the fifth sector that is more with more employments available here in Brazil. Inside of the Calçados, we have the footwear Brazilian. There is a partnership with Apex since 2000, promoting exportations in Brazilian shoes. I'm going to show you in the next slides what we are working in international. Well, it's in English, but it's the focus for our project here specifically. It's time with we meet again. We have been making shoes for more than 130 years. 
For more than 50, we are connected to the world and we are just getting started. We are solid on our internal market. We are connected to you, connected to your customers. We are big, the biggest in the West. We are present on retailers of every size. We are trusted by renowned brands across the world. We have experience and a skilled workforce. We are flexible on our production. Bom, uma pena que ele não passou, mas... Oh, it's a pity that it's not loading here, but this is a summarizing of what we work here. Related to the project, our target is every kind of feminine or women, uh, male and children, from any kind of type of company, being a micro-enterprise or a major one. Also... It's important to mention that are related to companies that are interested in exportation. So we reach out to our website, brazilianfootwear.com. Well, our story has started before pandemics. It's interesting to think about it. In 2015, it was through this website that people could see our footwear and shoes in, in 2019. We created a platform in a friendly way and lighter. In 2020, we started to having international purchases. And just by the last year, we restructured our website. And in this present year, the digital, it's a reality already. So here I bring out how was the version looked like in 2015. It's quite similar to Marketplace. So our enterprises that are associated, they could register the products and made available for international purchases. And by 2019, we had new possibilities, transforming it and making it easier for companies and also for purchase. So he could link to social media and then we get to the current version. We learned so much during pandemics, as Juarez mentioned, I think we all learned so much, thinking about new opportunities for companies. So we changed it a bit and made the platform a bit different for our associates. But you may ask, how can you interact? How it's going to be? How it's going to look like? But it's a possibility to connect with brands that would offer the products for international market. So here, the example is the kind of future you can look for. It's for a, a sports shoe, or the type of material, the synthetic, if it's kind of color. And from that filter, the platform is going to generate the results. And I also inform the feedback from Rafael from BSB. It's a safety footwear. And through the platform, it has started a negotiation with purchases from Jamaica. So we noticed that this is uh, so broad. We can attend purchase not only in Brazil, but also everywhere and every kind. Besides that, we could take the physical for the digital. We have a partnership for more than 10 years with Vogue Brazil, in which we produce the footwear for Brazil that has additions for both summer and winter, bringing the trends for the next year. We always did this physical and always distributed in fairs. But, however, the last version of the platform, we brought it to the digital. So it's easier to establish and also to distribute. We also brought thematical filters in which you can direct for sustainability, craft label, campaigns that we would like to show the public 
that we are, have been working in the sector. And here we have another feedback from the company that was part of this campaign. Specifically, it was Profitable, which is a private company. And from that material that we produced specifically for the platform, this person, Juliana, had the access from a purchase in Chile. The learning we've noticed so far throughout the years would be the production of specific and proper material for our platform. It has improved our engagement so much. We have an increase of 350%. And from those, 24% of the access were coming from the America. So it's really all the strategy we we're working on, the marketing for social medias and campaigns, we're also obtaining good results. And another of our focus is that 60% of our access we get, all of them, they are made from mobile version. So we are concerned about having the mobile friendly kind of interface because it's something that's going to keep going. Besides that, we were able to make the digital inside the platform. And well, what we did was that as fair as and everything was coming back to presential and physical world we brought these events inside the platform and then we link to the participant companies and make a distribution through social media and marketing for international purchases in which they can connect to the companies that are participating to understand and gather more information in case they would like to schedule a meeting in those events the next one is the Mikan that's going to take place in the next week. And to wrap up, I'm going to leave here a sentence by Bill Gates that makes a lot of sense for us, which is the technological advance is based on its integration in a way that you don't even realize and it's become part of your daily life. This is not only applied for the the companies, but also for the purchases. Well, I hope I didn't took this long, and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carla, for presenting the Brazilian footwear, especially for retail, for goods. And now let's see the case of success from Victor. First of all, great afternoon for everyone. Thank you, Apex and SPM and all the supporters for this event and the audience that is watching us in a hybrid way. After two years of online events, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to present a success case that is derived of the same program that in 2017 has inspired us and then we proceeded in one of the first projects for mentorship. And then we started working in marketplaces. I would like to ask to share the presentation here. And while that, I'm going to like to add something here that the way we can make promotions of business how the mentorship can focus in micro enterprises from China is started in a fair, a different fair, in the first China importation fair. And the WeChat catalog, we made it in Chinese with a few suppliers for food and drinks. And it also got our attention for the Chinese that we were working, the way that we make the and of course the apex program itself so let's begin so first of all my name is victor leon i'm the director from the mastermind is a group made for three companies the oldest one is master auditing and consulting created in 1999 
And our commercial and export is also derived from another APEX program. So we could proceed with our development. And from the start, we were associated to the supplier, the suppliers project, also another from APEX. And Master in Apoio is our support for internationalization and digital support. We reviewed our values and mission, and everything also made more sense after training we had with Alibaba Group. We were pursuing to add up to our point of view, especially based on three pillars, which is the digitalization, as much as possible, giving the information inside the cloud to treat better the data, the networking for data intelligence. And this is the way we develop services and also commerce. This is a milestone for me. This is me in Hangzhou, is the Alibaba headquarter. I already attended this exchange for training, focus in Alibaba.com, which was the first business of the Alibaba group from the, in 1999, with focusing in B2B in a global level. So companies from several different kinds of profiles. And after the mentorship in the Chinese e-commerce, I realized that this would be the best way to aggregate solutions for all of our clients. We had some that were focusing on Chinese market. And we understood that broadening all the markets as Alibaba.com, we would have so much to win. And after that time, I went there very eager to see how it would work out. And we had at that time around 50 suppliers in Alibaba.com, licensed as suppliers in the B2B marketplaces. This process is based on conditioning. So you can sell it in the platform. In Alibaba, it's about licensing. So it's not a huge number close to our potential, but we have this possibility to get more salespeople, more Brazilian brands, and to promote exportation itself. There is a roadblock, however, but if we don't understand the competition, the environment, or the dynamics of the platform, we are not going to be successful or hardly will. So first of all, we were able to convert a project that are focusing in China. As a matter of fact, the case was approached last year, and I invite everyone to get to know it better. And then we were aggregating solutions for it. And then we baptize it as Alibrave, as our new brand. Those solutions, in a major scale, they are gathering more tools, more concepts. So we get the data intelligence as a foundation. And then we integrate as management tools. And all of them started to work for CRM and all the projects have them adapted for international commerce and integrated in a way that is handling the data, such as Alibaba.com, in a similar way, and establishing companies is quite needed so we can keep up the competition, especially in logistics in the international level, in different ports in different countries, the integration for marketplaces. This took place over time, and it's a very interesting experience as our learning was that platforms would be complementing each other instead of annulating each other. The algorithms are different. They work in different ways. So, for instance, the blue one 
is the range mail, as what is mentioned. And then you can think about Alibaba as a sales channel instead. So it's quite possible to use this in an integrated manner. The rate me and trailing are platforms A to B. This is used for range me, which is quite strong in USA, but recently has expanded for other English speakers countries. An international network of partners in B2B in which you can get a local agent. It's going to be so helpful to develop a business. And the first one that we visit was starting the, the conversation with a local agent asking for a position of a lead. So we already had this kind of information, the contact. We now ask for a, a visit. So you see that this kind of hybrid model also works quite well. The specialization and also the certification. And I got the opportunity to be a spokesperson for Alibaba.com, making lectures for more than two years. And with a new partner now with Alibaba.com, we also made a physical presentation. And Big Data, well, we already been working with Big Data even before our exploitation system with market studies. So big data is still a mold for us, it's still a possibility to qualify and keep going. And we have the opportunity for internationalization, which is the Alibaba.com in the US, which is a bit different from us here in Brazil, which we have a service aggregate in which it's a system in which has an insurance. It's also possible to think about it if you think to develop this in the US. So these are just a few examples of solutions. Uh, these are just options for the position in the platform is seamless in the best way possible. It's a daily work that involves engagement and dedication. And we brought that experience to uh, from Alibrave to our own store in March during the program that we held with Apex Brazil e-export. And we launched therefore our store at alibaba.com. And our exporter gathered many brands and today we have over 10 brands from different sectors and we have improved this online store on a daily basis by adding new vendors. It's very interesting because that shows the force of Brazilian products that in just a few months we were performing based on the Alibaba.com's algorithm like a company that uh, was already an established company at Alibaba.com. And as you uh, perform well according to algorithm, and that generates a permanent flow of growth, and that's exponential. And we also have the prospect, for instance, we have a brand that is about to be included, and we understand that it's important to comply with our checklist. Every change and everything has its ch its own checklist, but that changes from time to time. For, for instance, Alibaba.com is being more strict in terms of regulations because it's very, very important now for our suppliers to have those certifications and the business model in B2B and in B2C vary a lot. And we are also looking for making the integration because sometimes we have those. And we sometimes have the minimum order like one pallet. And if we had an offer at B2B or B2C for a lower number of products, then it's something that we could not uh, miss. 
it's very important um, for us to invite you to know our, to learn more about our store online and understand how the dynamics of it works on Ali dot alibaba.com we will have further information about alibaba.com so that we can learn more about the platform as well and just to sum it up we have some lessons learned and understand a little a little bit more about alibaba experience first of all this insertion process and platform position process it's important to simulate as if you were a uh, supplier an exporter a retailer so all the profiles that is they are in the platform and we should uh, simulate a search for your products and conduct a benchmark and study the positions and the prices and alibaba is actually a very sophisticated tool with many possibilities of promoting your products organically you have online events like this one, and we will have the Super September, and everyone is in this online event, and that brings you additional visibility, specifically for those who do live streaming. And now I refer to the speech of uh, one of our panelists about the fear of technology and that could be cured by doing a live stream for instance and showing the products online because many markets are still not aware of your product and we have to show them what we have to offer them and you have to walk them through the preparation of your products and how it's consumed for instance. and then we should build an engagement because any platform makes many resources available for your learning and that's something constant and the algorithm is also very constant very dynamic it continues to be modified along the time and all of the time and you should adapt to it constantly and this engagement as you correspond to what the platform expects from you you will have your result and the platform will continue fostering you to perform specifically those licensing based solutions and if that's not the case why are you staying in the platform otherwise so that is what the platform is all about to entice you to use the platform even more sometimes you might not be receiving orders for instance and the platform offers you that and does the monitoring of certain products in a certain market and based on the correspondence that the platform sends to you so engagement is also fundamental that involves learning how to use your profile the profiles that you have available and how to approach those audiences some audiences are more technical others are not that much technical and how to conduct your audience towers purchasing your produce and these are my con this is my contact data and feel free to contact me anytime thank you very much so thank you Milan, very much and now we have time for two questions and i will compile those very briefly and carla we have a question that was asked through our digital device and here we have these so how can a footwear company access the platform and is this the sale done through the platform how does it work selling on the platform so or for all the footwear companies to access the platform you have to be a express footer a program you have to be an associate of that program or they could contact us at abi calzados for that and when began the platform process and this is something that we discussed before with apex if we could make those sales on the platform or not and we eventually came to the conclusion that what we could do to connect brazilian footwear companies with potential international buyers because the negotiations are very different everything is very different we would uh, we, we might be creating a monster but first of all we 
decided to focus on connecting those companies to international buyers. And this is something that we've still done and we have improved uh, along the way. And including those who are interested in getting contacts from ABI Calçados, please fill your information in the chat box so that you can be contacted by Carlos. So, and now I have another comment, but now I will pass the comment to Juarez because Marta said that we will be talking about the Premier Vision here. And you were asked that your calm and patient to talk about electronics remains of Professor Carnau, who is a philosopher in Brazil. And we, we would also like to know how your service uh, in your company works in America. And this is something that is very interesting that we've been done. We are trying to expand in America. And we eventually registered as a supplier of services and we are already meeting the needs of some companies in the United States, and we are also exporting services. We have this online direct service channel in America, in English, and we should also, based on that work, on the, on the American market. And another question, which I commit to sending you in the future, but uh, the last question is to Jordi. So we have the service trajectory that cannot be ignored here, including leading APEX actions in the United States. I would like to ask you this question. When you see a company that wants to become international and moves on to e-commerce, sometimes they have to take some care. So what are the most tricky points of attention that these companies might see to endeavor into the digital world? So we do have a solution developed by APEX and us, which is fundamental. In the past three years, APEX teams started to get a know-how based on our offices. And we started to see that we have a different business model based on distribution in marketing investments, heavy market investment. But prior to that, we still have some companies that are not into uh, e-commerce yet, but a few conditions have to be met so that we can have minimal conditions to play this game. And so you should take part in our pro programs, get in contact with our teams, and also be part of our e-commerce process because you would be aware of the minimum requirements for you. And then the team will return you based on the permission that you gave to APEX what your uh, proper schedule is, what are your proper um, program would be for you to get in, to get digital and uh, develop your activities in America. And that is necessary because everyone wants to uh, get into the United States because it's the largest market in the world. And in Brazil, we have a team that will walk you through all the processes and we also have a team based in the United States that can provide you, they can provide you with help in that and uh, provide we, you with all the information required for you to create an a e-business model in the United States. And the richness of this event is based on the people present at this event. We have APEX, we have SIBRAI, we have the university, we have uh, an employer association. This is an ecosystem that has to be strengthened and it has to work as well so that we can improve and expedite our internationalization. And I was happy during Milan's presentation when he shows the network we had Bifun and Bifun was a company that began their commercial international uh, insertion along with a junior company developed by us. So a company that now already exports um, rice noodles from a city called Suzano to other countries started with university students being provided support from us. And that product is including promotion in Chinese uh, good fairs. And now that we have the presence of President Piston, we should reinforce those institutional links. And Brazil has one of the best ecosystems for supporting international, international internationalization. And we should 
know how to use it, how to get the best from it. And those who are interested in that can add information on that in the chat box. But we do have an ebook developed by that, and the interested people um, on that would uh, be getting that information right away. So we are just getting information and inspiration from this event. Just continue with us, okay? Our thank you to the participants of this panel and Professor Diogo Coelho Juarez and Victor Milão. And we are taking part of this talk, highlighting the importance of going international for Brazilian companies. And now we will continue with this dynamic of promoting our products internationally and sector entities and institutions like Apex because international transformation should continue with our going international. And now we are assuming, no, we are um, resuming our agenda, and we are about to see the signature of another memorandum of understanding. And again, you feel free to ask your questions on, in the web chat, and we are provided with feedback as soon as possible so that we can improve our encounters. Okay. And we are now changing. Uh, languages now to announce that Apex Brazil and the Alibaba Group have formalized a memorandum of understanding to promote the export of Brazilian products to the whole world through the Alibaba Group's platforms, in particular to the business to business exports of Brazilian companies. Therefore, I invite to the stage the head of international government relations for the Americas of Alibaba Group, Mr. Bill Anaya. Please. Sir. And also the president of Apex Brazil, Ambassador Augusto Pestana. Boa tarde. Uh, uh, Mr. Augusto Pistana, President, Ambassador, privileged to be here with you, Mr. Carlos Meles, President Sobrae, Mr. Dalton Pastore Jr., President of ASPME, Mr. Leonardo Silva, Vice President of Camaray Neche. Distinguished leaders, guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's very good for us to be here with you. Uh, together with my colleagues from Alibaba, uh, we've traveled uh, from a range of areas of around the world and the country uh, to be here with you today, and it's a great privilege uh, for us to be here with you and your team. Uh, it has really been special for us over the years to have been building toward this moment uh, and uh, to strengthen our partnership with Apex Brazil we really thank you, uh, Mr. President, and uh, Clarissa and Karina, for all you have done and your teams to work with us at Alibaba. Partnerships such as ours are really impactful. Uh, they're important. Uh, it's natural. It's really natural for us at Alibaba to be working with you because what you do and what we do to try to make it easy to do business anywhere is really at the core of what we do as a company. We're perfectly aligned. We understand uh, your vision and what you're trying to accomplish, and we want to do all we can to support you. Our cooperation began in 2017 when Apex Brazil participated in the Dinner with the Ambassador uh, program. Uh, that was hosted by our online B2C platform, Tmall, uh, which many of you may be familiar with. And the whole idea was to promote Brazilian foods to Chinese consumers. The following year, in about the middle of the year, 
there was the Brazilian Coffee Seminar that was hosted by the Brazilian Embassy in China, also Apex Brazil and Tmall again, and that was held in our Beijing offices at Alibaba. And later that year, Apex Brazil organized a group of Brazilian entrepreneurs to participate in the Alibaba Dream Trip. That is a study tour that is intended to develop a comprehensive understanding of Alibaba's e-commerce ecosystem. Now here we are today in 2022. This is really the fifth year of our partnership, and I'm super excited that we're taking steps to strengthen and deepen our relationship. Today, you, sir, and I, uh, on behalf of the company, and privileged to do so. Uh, at the table with you will sign a memorandum of understanding uh, that is designed to establish a formal and flexible framework that will do three things. Uh, one, it will foster the continued cooperation between Apex Brazil and Alibaba to advance the adoption of e-commerce. Second, it will promote cross-border trade, and we've just been discussing this, and I know how important this is to you and your mission and the success and uh, wisdom you bring to it from your years in diplomacy. And third, to facilitate the digital transformation of Brazilian enterprise. A key focus of our joint efforts will be to expand export channels for Brazilian products into Asian and global markets through Alibaba's online platforms. We will also work together to support the digital transformation and development of Brazilian companies' mastery of e-commerce through Alibaba's capacity building programs. Just last year, Brazilian businesses sold more than $250 million of their products, their great products from here to consumers in China through our online platforms. And under the framework of this, this MOU, we're hoping to grow that ever still in each and every successive year. The main products you may be asking yourself uh, that were successful on the platform, they included health foods, uh, packaged foods, meats, uh, honey and green propolis, and I see Roberto here from Novomel, uh, superstar uh, on our platform. Uh, and these are the kinds of products that the Chinese consumers were really happy to be able to buy uh, from Brazil on our platforms. And we're going to work together to ensure that we go beyond uh, sh shopping just on Tmall and Fresh Hippo, but to include our B2B platforms in Fresh Hippo you all may be interested to know is our online and offline grocery business, uh, which is a great home for Brazilian meats uh, and, and other products. Uh, we're going to try to expand these categories, sir, and uh, not only grow them, but, but get beyond uh, those categories to continue to help uh, Brazilian businesses to succeed. Under the framework of the MOU, we plan to uh, launch a unique Made in Brazil pavilion. This is going to be on our B2B platform known as Alibaba.com. And uh, as part of this effort, uh, we're going to work together, Alibaba with Apex Brazil, uh, to plan to help 100 businesses. We were just talking about this with Karina. We're going to help 100 Brazilian companies set up their virtual storefronts within this very special pavilion. Alibaba.com, again, our B2B platform, is going to commit dedicated resources uh, to these 100 companies. We're going to help them launch their online shopping presence. We're going to help them with their product listings, their website design, and even customize B2B distribution from Brazil uh, to China. We will also provide quarterly operation reports to ensure we're aligned on progress in areas for improvement. You discussed with us how you care about results, your focus and mission-driven organization, and we want to be with you uh, shoulder to shoulder in that effort. Part of our ongoing work uh, is to assist Brazilian uh, merchants uh, in gaining a deeper understanding of and acquiring greater access to the Chinese market. This includes fostering Brazilian merchants' engagements uh, with Tmall Global, Alibaba.com, and Fresh Hippo. And we're very pleased that over the course of this week and under, under your leadership and uh, patronage, uh, that Alibaba uh, will be participating in two workshops on the 15th that we hope uh, uh, the audience and, and other participants uh, will be able to enjoy uh, and engaging in. Those will be principally focused on our B2B Alibaba.com platform as well as our Tmall Global, which is the B2C uh, platform. In recent years, um, 
Apex Brazil and Alibaba have continued to help small businesses, medium businesses, and others sell their digital transformation and to help them go global. And back to Roberto, I think one of the most outstanding examples of a small and medium-sized enterprise uh, working with Alibaba, uh, what the benefits of that can be can, seen in, can be seen in our partnership with, with Novamel. Uh, they export, I think, some of the world's best green propolis and honey, and they're developing some new products uh, that uh, we're also very enthusiastic about. They launched with us in 2019, and I think the growth has been in the 20 to 30 percent range each with each successive year. And what they're doing inspires us to want to do more uh, to help uh, Brazilian small businesses to succeed. And we could not be more humbled by the success of Novamel and and the way that the company I really feel has uh, has a special. Um, I think you take a special responsibility to serve as an ambassador to help small other small businesses uh, to try to gain the same types of success that they are are, are reaching um, by serving overseas markets, and and that I have to say inspires us to try to work harder to do better uh, at Alibaba. Um, we've um, we've also launched uh, a new a business model called the mini store. This is with Tmall. And I wanted to share this with you because it's, it's a consignment model uh, that can really help small, smaller businesses to be able to test the waters of China with less risk, but more operational and logistical support from our company. We hope this will be an option that can help other SMEs to do well and to add to their local economies uh, as, as a springboard uh, to uh, wanting to have their own virtual store. Uh, in China. We're also doing more to help larger companies uh, to, to engage in business uh, digitally. And we've launched the Alibaba Fulfillment Service. Uh, we're we're um, in talks with Brazilian brands. Uh, two that I'd like to share with you today are, are the specialty coffee maker Santa Monica and also the juice brand Natural One. And we hope to be facilitating their very first orders next month. Uh, the products would be distributed through our online and offline marketplaces in preparation for the Chinese New Year festival promotion. And uh, furthermore, to assist the Brazilian business community in the cultivation of digital talent, Alibaba's EWTP uh, program and the team there will be working with yours at Apex Brazil uh, to jointly promote training programs in Brazil. Those will build on the capacity of Brazilian entrepreneurs and students to engage in digital trade. We at Alibaba are really excited about all of this. Uh, we are thrilled about our special partnership and our relationship with Apex Brazil and the further collaboration that, that uh, today's MOU uh, will uh, be launching. Uh, we're excited for the opportunity to provide positive services to the Brazilian merchants and consumers alike. And we're overjoyed to be able to join with, with Apex Brazil to build value um, because it's really your important work at Apex Brazil that creates jobs uh, here in Brazil. So as we all know, uh, these are very, very difficult and challenging times uh, globally. Uh, very, very difficult. Uh, for uh, people the world over, uh, challenging for businesses and consumers. And yet this is a moment uh, when um, there are significant opportunities uh, to expand access to international markets and to build a more dynamic and efficient digital pathway for Brazilian businesses uh, to enable their broader, broader success uh, with all of their enterprises, uh, around the planet. And it is an honor for us to be a partner with Apex Brazil uh, in this effort. And I'd like to thank you and obrigado. Okay, cha -cha. So we just listen to the head of international government relations for the Americas. Nós queremos agradecer a participação e vamos proceder a ouvir o presidente da Apex Brasil, embaixador Augusto Pestana. 
Eu vou continuar falando inglês. É um grande prazer estar aqui hoje, estar com todos os nossos colegas do Alibaba e também meus colegas da Apex Brasil e todos aqueles que estão acompanhando através da plataforma online. Estou muito feliz de ver os resultados e você esteve aqui desde o começo desta manhã e especialmente quando a gente estava fazendo a apresentação inicial com os outros presidentes da universidade e também o vice-presidente da Universidade de E-Commerce. Estou aqui também tentando passar uma mensagem sobre quais são as nossas prioridades e aqueles que trabalham conosco sabem que, às vezes, é um pouco difícil. São palavras, palavras. E onde estão as ações? Então, por isso, eu gostaria de agradecer não somente pela apresentação, que foi muito completa. Você também comentou que a parte do negócio que devemos criar vai ser mutuamente benéfica para a parte privada do Brasil, nos setores, e apresentar resultados. Isso é muito importante para nós, para a Apex Brasil. E é muito interessante quando pensamos sobre a origem da parceria e a origem dessa iniciativa né, do programa da Apex Brasil, da exportação, Essencialmente, falamos sobre algo que começamos há cinco anos. E naquela época, o CEO da Apex Brasil era um colega meu, diplomata de carreira essencial, Roberto Lagoribe, que foi embaixador em Beijing. E claramente um dos talentos que nós Tivemos em relações internacionais, alguém que também foi subsecretário para a Ásia e também compreendia muito bem a importância da China, da Ásia. E não é nenhuma coincidência que comentamos isso em 2015, o mesmo ano, na mesma época em que estávamos lançando nossa parceria. E eu me recordo de quando estávamos falando a respeito das ideias, da visão, que também estávamos pensando a respeito é, antes da cerimônia, qual falávamos sobre a importância da visão de longo prazo para que esta parceria possa ocorrer bem. E o longo prazo também para a relação Brasil-China. Acreditamos que a China é o nosso maior parceiro comercial e eu estou muito feliz, muito contente de ver alguns exemplos, porque, novamente, quando precisamos, por exemplo, temos aqui o slogan da do comitê, inspiração, conexão, e a inspiração é essencial para que possamos inspirar os outros. E fico muito feliz de ver o Roberto e o exemplo... Desculpa, a luz está um pouco aqui, não consigo ver onde o Roberto está sentado. E há uma história de sucesso. E isso é incrível, é algo que inspira a todos. É informação que... Uh, temos muitas informações para fornecer, mas também por fazer isso. E até mais importante são as ações, no qual iremos traduzir nossos esforços com os nossos resultados positivos para todas as partes envolvidas. Então, muito obrigado. A sua apresentação foi muito importante para nós, para aqui da Apex Brasil, e fico muito feliz que podemos continuar adiante. 
em que estamos conseguindo né, conseguir resultados muito satisfatórios, mas o fato disso não quer dizer que vamos ficar, ah, tá tudo bem, não, nós podemos fazer mais. Eu sei que nós conseguimos e é algo que nós temos o espírito para seguir em frente com a nossa equipe, incluindo outras regiões do Brasil, outros escritórios em Beijing, o escritor em Xangai também, e iremos encontrar com muito entusiasmo para ajudar as nossas vidas, para empresários, tanto homens quanto mulheres, e as empresas globais chinesas, que obviamente serão oportunas em outros mercados. Muito obrigado, é um grande prazer. E vamos assinar. Muito obrigado. Obrigada, embaixador. Então, agora, vamos prosseguir com a assinatura deste documento extremamente importante. Senhoras e senhores, neste momento, senhor Bian Nair, embaixador Augusto Pestano, Estão assinando o memorando de compreensão da exportação de produtos brasileiros para todo o mundo através da plataforma Alibaba, especialmente B2B, exportação de brasile companhias brasileiras. Novamente, muito obrigada, Bionaya, embaixador Augusto Pestana. Muito bem. Então agora. So now we are going to conclude this part. It's just the first day of this week that's going to be extremely productive. This is the third edition of the export meeting promoted by Apex Brazil. Promoted. And if you are present here and are previously enrolled for the roundtables between Brazilian companies and suppliers for international e-commerce, we are going to offer a lunch in Block C, in which we're going to take the roundtables. Right after the break, we're going to proceed with this moment, and our staff is going to orient you in terms of how to locate it. And you that is watching us via remote, you can see how it's going to be today so we can spread our knowledge and we ask that the participants is going to access our research in here in your screen too the feedback from you is extremely important for us so we can strengthen and improve our event so we are starting to close up yeah, our the first morning for this event And before that, I'd like to reinforce that we are starting, as mentioning, there are so many contents. And thank you so much for you that watch the content in person or online. And especially for our partners, those that were here with us in the SPM campus. Tomorrow, we're going to continue at 9 a.m. from the Apex Brazil office in the US and we're going to present several opportunities for the American market, especially the transformation for our e-commerce. We expect to see you tomorrow remotely. I wish you a great afternoon and we'll keep together until Friday for this event, inspiring and taking knowledge for you. Export Apex Brazil. Thank you so much. <laughs>